welcome back everyone this is uh the third summoner scuffle and it is going to be between uh massimo and stuffy massimo on the cloaks and stuffy on the sand goblins uh both of this both these factions coming in this matchup uh pronounced is stuffy pronounced the german way Oof. Do, do you know how stuffy <laughs> close enough <laughs> he had his chance to correct us he had his and chance and neither ne neither of us speak german so <laughs> we're not going to make extraordinary efforts <laughs> uh yeah well we can surely ask him later on stufti uh yeah that i mean that sounds cooler um <laughs> Uh, but yeah, let's so let, let's talk about this matchup and uh, yeah, do you have any like f first things to talk, say about the matchup and then we can like go over the different tools that each deck has and then maybe go a bit more into depth after that. I just think this one's going to be fun. I think yeah. it's really hard to predict what the board state's going to look like. Um, but as commentators, we can try to unpack some of what's going on. I know it feels like chaos if you're new and just watching these two factions. Um, but we'll try to pick through some of the things that each faction likes to do and, you know, what they're trying to get at. <laughs> but why yeah. don't we start at the beginning? Yeah, sounds good. And it seems like, I mean, something we can notice, that, like, I think these factions can both do, like, similar things of being able to stand, stay back, um, though maybe in different ways. So you can see it being interesting. Uh, let's, let's start with cloaks. Uh, so, I mean... Cloaks, I, I can sort of see them as having like two big strengths. One of them is being able to get efficient attacks without uh, destroying, without exposing their own units. Um, so you can do things like you versatile attack in the move phase, and then the attack phase, you back up. You can have only one unit exposed, and you cover that unit with a smoke bomb um, to make it to make it easier. Um, you can use gunners to stack units so only a few units are exposed, even though you got very good attacks. So I can see like that as being one like very powerful playstyle for the cloaks is just exposing a few of their own units. And the second one is just the assassination playstyle, which comes principally from this from their epic event uh, out of shadows that just when a unit attacks another when one of your friendly units attacks an enemy unit you can like teleport a unit that was within two spaces of the your unit that attacks to anywhere adjacent to that friendly unit so basically you can just gang up on someone very easily and you have cards like dagger that will then um jump behind jump behind uh if they jump behind the enemy unit they're going to get extra strength um yeah, so that's like that's how the cloaks are generally looking to play and just sort of approach any matchup. Uh, you have anything anything to add about that? No, let's go on to the sand goblins. Awesome. Uh, so sand goblins. Uh, this I feel like there's different ways to play them, and maybe they're newer, so we're still figuring out how I tend to think of playing them. Is you can you can you can rush down your opponent. You have you have um like biters that can sp that can sprint in and fly in, crash, do damage. You can equip them with wrench rats um, that will do extra damage when the biters die. Uh, and when the biters die, uh, they're gonna do damage to adjacent units. Um, and you can also have this card detonate. So equip a bunch of wrench rats onto a biter. It then runs in. It gets detonated. Does a bunch of damage to the enemy summoner. You get all those cards back, so you can do it again. And how a lot of players I've seen um who've played a lot of sand goblin tend to just like put all of these upgrades that you have all three of your events are upgrades that go on structures and you have two of the types of units in your deck like bug biters or structures put all these upgrades on like your 10 health gate um you put a thruster upgrade on your 10 health grade turret upgrade on your 10 health gate um to just like keep your 10 health gate in the front and be the only thing exposed on some turns when you can afford to do that um, and just be able to get free spawning spots, and then whenever your 10 health gate gets low on health, you detonate it. Now, this, this strategy isn't always viable. If your thrusters are buried, it's hard to really, it's hard to use your gate if you can't be moving it around, but your general, <laughs> I guess the general way I'd describe the Sand Goblin's playstyle is, is uh, hit and run, just mosquito bites here and there until before you know it, you're dead. And it's fun, because both these factions are very much hit and run factions but they have a very different play style. And I think we'll get to see that in this matchup. And people um, who are maybe studying this for League and or are familiar with these factions are going to kind of be expecting Super Vlox versus Super Gate. You yeah. know, we're going to be expecting Vlox um, copying a loaded up machinist or machinist. I don't know how you pronounce it, but yeah. that guy in back, um, maybe copying a loaded up sniper as well. 
Krusk were expecting Supergate. So on the surface, it maybe feels a little bit like these are the two dominant strategies. It's getting a little boring. In reality, both pieces, both factions require enough setup and have enough extra options that I don't see it as one dimensional at all. I don't see it as simply super blocks versus super gate and ignore the rest of the deck. I yeah. think for both factions, there's going to be tempo components, spacing components, hand management components. So even if the end game, or I would say the mid game, not even the end game, like what end game, someone's going to be dead. <laughs> Um, but, you know, even if we see Super Vlox versus Super Gate, how we got there is really almost the more interesting part of the matchup. It's why commentate it as opposed to just watch it. Yeah, yeah. I feel like that's illustrated to me when I try to play these factions, when I try to do these exactly. strategies myself. Like, it's very easy to watch a tournament and be like, oh, yeah, of course we're going to see Super Vlox, of course Super Gate. But when I try to do it myself uh, with either with either factions, cloaks are much harder for me. But like even, even with Sand Goblins, it's like, okay, I need to get this gate. I need to be getting efficient attacks while also exposing nothing of my own. And then they rush me down. I can't do it. Like, actually getting the pieces together. And I think it's even a lot tougher with cloaks. It's like, all right, you've got your blocks. And if he's down half his health, like... Super blocks is gone. <laughs> you can't really use them anymore. In order to get those setups to just like have the just where well, your opponent just can't counterattack effectively, but you're also ready to drop on them, it's just very hard. So many options. I, I find it incredibly difficult to execute that strategy. That sort of I agree primary. strongly. That's why we're we're talking about it rather than playing it. <laughs> yeah. And I think this one's also going to be fun because to some extent, Sand Goblins makes Super Vlox a little bit less... The, the crazier versions of Super Vlox is a little bit less viable because Sand Goblins are great at just getting splash damage, chip damage, just taking out Super Vlox's health a little bit at a time until suddenly you can't expose him as much as you need to. Um, to really get in some of these double attacks and crazy out of shadows plays. Yeah. So there are certain things we can, we, you know, there are certain things we're used to expecting from cloaks. You know, we're used to expecting Vlox copying a Machinist in the corner. We're used to expecting an epic out of shadows turn with, um, with Dagger and Sinsin and Bandits basically ganging up. Um, Slung in and out and getting triple attacks on a hapless enemy summoner. And Sand Goblins changes this up a little bit via, their, first of all, their capacity for splash damage. And also their ability to get there first. To pull off that assassination before Vlox has his pieces together. So both of them are going to have an interesting hand management and econ challenge. Neither of them is going to be playing for the end game. Neither of them is going to be playing to be the last summoner standing at the end of the decks. But they're both trying to maximize value, and both decks have some nice tools to maximize value while they're getting their assassination machines going. And I think that'll be fun to watch with these two players as well, just because both of them are so good at playing econ as well as playing assassination. I mean, I hope we get to see some good assassination because that's exciting. Yeah. You know, who doesn't want the big play? Yeah. Yeah. You know, the big dice rolls. But I think we will see both. That's my my guess, my hope. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I guess that too. Yeah. And it's interesting to hear you say that, that you think like both factions are geared toward assassination. Just for myself as an econ player, like... I re like I just really try to build every deck towards econ as much as I can, and both decks have some pretty incredible tools towards econ. And yet, yeah, somehow we tend to see these games go towards assassination, though not necessarily. I good. Think, yeah, I think both these decks have some fabulous econ tools. I also think the 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 econ is more a means to an end mm -hmm. than an end in itself. Yeah. For these decks compared to something like Vanguard's, where your entire strategy is to be the last summoner standing. Yeah, yeah no, it, yeah, that's, that's a good way of putting it. I, I guess, so I could start, um, and we have only a few, minute, four, few more minutes left, but I start by just like a, a theorizing about how exactly I think like the matchup dynamics are here like just asking questions like who has the econ advantage who has the range advantage who has to put oh i want to ask you about like range that. advantage 
Yeah. That's the one where I want to put you on the spot, since no, that's your the theory. Uh, it's, yeah, I mean, well, so my theory is that the cloaks need to push. Um, and this this could be wrong, and it's really tough to gauge range advantage with two factions that are just so finicky and, like, like have very powerful ranged abilities, but in weird ways. Like, Crust just, like, sends out a biter with a bunch of rats and detonates on your summoner, and then you have nothing to equip. And it's like, okay, they didn't do any ranged attacks there, but still sort of a ranged advantage though also Krusk has this incredible tool for the end game the thrusters I find myself using more and more of just like if I can get to the end game with like a full health Krusk and a full health Uncle Sparks with like a thruster on them or like a, a thruster on Krusk and then a thruster on my gate it's very easy to just like get get an attack for three every turn and then back up like out of range of anything important um oh that's a beautiful end game <laughs> yeah and so like what what I and I've, somehow I've, I've, I've looked into playing this matchup a few times and how it generally goes is, and, and a few times actually I've always been playing on the Sand Goblin side, so I can't really speak holistically, but how, how it goes when I play it is I'm sort of playing for this chill econ game and my, and the cloaks at some point need to do a push to stop that. Like the cloaks can vibe with me and just like be exchanging ranged back and forth for a, a little while. But I think the sand goblins win that game. And then this is this is me putting my foot down. I could be totally wrong, but I think the sand goblins like in general will win like the ranged econ game maybe just by like a hair or something because like the cloaks tend to i mean they they like to sit back and and just exchange blows but they can they really excel once you actually get in there once you set up the assassination um and so where i find myself losing this matchup is when i feel like i'm chilling and then there's just a turn or suddenly blocks and dagger and sinsin are right next to me they didn't even kill me but they're just in my territory and it's suddenly like oh crap kruska is gonna die next turn i need to dump a ton of resources to get back to safety i'm not using those efficiently and so now i'm much more behind on the econ game so if i had to predict i'd say like the the cloaks are gonna at some point they need to do some sort of crazy they, they need to do some sort of unexpected push catch the sand goblins player off guard even though they're both very capable of doing these ranged these range back oh i agree fully this is where i this is why i'm saying that for cloaks that econ is a means to an end they're not gonna win on econ alone yeah yeah you know they're not gonna stand there in the backfield and kind of trade units they need to you they need to do their big flashy plays at some point um, and I, that's actually my favorite way to win against cloaks, actually, is that attrition win where I deck them out. You know, I can't do it with every faction. I certainly can't do it all the time. But they're definitely vulnerable if they don't make their big play. You know, if they don't get blocks in the fray, if they don't have out of shadows going, if they don't have a dagger, Sin Sin, or it doesn't need to be Sin Sin, sometimes Sin Sin is useless, but, you know, a big dagger sly play with bandits or Sin Sin. You know, if they don't use one of their really powerful tools, then their units aren't actually all that synergistic. They're not synergistic. They're, yeah, I love playing against cloaks by trying to break up their synergy, you know, because they don't really trade well without it. But that said, it's easier said than done and certainly can't be done with all factions. I think Sand Goblins, speaking to your comment about ranged advantage, I actually think they need to take the initiative sometimes a little bit sooner than the cloaks. Like, the cloaks aren't going to win by firing off ranged shots. They're not going to win by playing this little clockwork gunner, sniper, yeah, you know, move yeah. them in a stack game. But they can do that a little bit longer in the early game while everyone's trying to get set up. Whereas Sand Goblin sometimes has to just send a lo you know, send a lone Rust Rider ahead to die in order to buy some time. Sand Goblins can sometimes get trapped into slight into suboptimal economic play when their early pieces don't line up and they don't have they don't have range in the sense of bow units. You know, the wrench rats there are not um, you know, like a gunner or a sniper. They serve a very different purpose. So I am not going to make predictions about who takes initiative sooner. Yeah. But it, I would yeah. say that if push comes to shove and they're in a staring contest, 
then maybe sand goblins have to blink first. Yeah. That's that's interesting and like I could I I could really see it either way and I could see it coming down to oh, the absolutely. card draw. So, like I think I I, come, I definitely see it coming down to card draw. Yeah, like I come a little bit down on the side of I like I I I I, I guess we're on opposite end like me me, me thinking uh, maybe the cloaks need to push first and you thinking maybe the sand goblins need to push first. Like it's so close that I I don't know, and I think it could just vary game to game. I don't know that. I, I don't know that either of us is putting chips down a saw on a side yeah. because it is so close. We're really just expressing both sides of the coin. Yeah, and and maybe this like illustrates something. I like. I really like matchups like this. I really like matchups where both factions have very similar range abilities. They can compete on the same sort of ranged level. Um, and you know, I'm gonna pause that thought for a second. Just got sent the game link. Um, gonna load that awesome. up. Awesome. Is that the invite or the link? I Load-up think that is like... the link. Alrighty, so we're both pulling up the start of the match. Alright, I've got it up. Uh, yeah, this is exciting. We will see it. So, again, uh, Stuffsy, they, Stuffsy said, uh, doesn't care how we do, how we pronounce, so I'm, I'm going with the Americanization. Uh, Stuffsy versus uh, it's Massimo. It's an Americanization here. for both of them. That's Massimo true. Massimo sent us the pronunciation, the, the clip from Gladiator. Oh, um, yes. And I know I'm just going to say Massimo when I get excited. <laughs> I'm not going to do the whole Massimo thing. Yeah, Massimo. Uh, that's good. <laughs> um, uh, All right, so let's see. Yeah, and and that up here. I'll, I'll just finish that last thought quickly. Like I, I just, I just really love games where both factions can compete at each other's range game, and so you just like play this crazy keep away game the whole time, as opposed to lots of factions. One's aggro, one's not. Um, uh, but yeah, so we're we're starting out um, Massimo just getting getting a shot off probably, and that's about it. Um, and uh, we'll we'll see we'll see who who sets up first, who's um... we'll see when the table setting ends and when the game begins. It could be two turns from now, and it could be after a couple of exchanges. Yeah, for sure. And you might you might have backed up like a. F- foot or two away from your mic or something. You sound just a tad quieter. All right. My computer offered me a chance to switch to Discord audio. If you want to just turn up my levels, I'll okay. keep talking while you can do that consistently. Um, yeah, sounds good. Well, I'll, so, I will just I will just turn you I'm going to talk about... All right. Tell me when to stop. Oh, yeah, here we go. I, Here's I, the first I, shot. I, I won't be changing anything. It's fine. Just, just keep talking. Uh, and in, in chat, if... Uh, I'm just gonna turn it up a little bit in chat. If if you if it looks like anything's off, just just let us know and we'll change it. Um, but no, you see, you sound fine. Uh, yeah. So what was that first shot? Was just the sniper on the rider. Um, yep. Um, Flox and Machinist move up a little bit, and now we're it's 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 table setting. It's not some big exciting turn one push. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. I wonder like. I feel like I've seen his walk sometimes the play of like you move up, place a gate, um, uh, get back there. Um, Hagrada says in chat, early mortar shot at that formation. Um, that's that's interesting. That would be a very nice spot to shoot a mortar at. Um, I wonder if Massimo has that in mind. I mean, you're going to have to sort of sacrifice whatever unit you put up there because it's just going to be exposed. Say so you put like the rider up there. I will have to see. I think we don't know enough about either hand to speculate. <laughs> you know, and as the game goes on, and as we see a little bit more, you know, we can at least identify patterns and have a little bit better guess what comes next. But right this moment, there's definitely some a- information asymmetry between what they know and what they're scheming, and what we know and we can speculate on. Yeah. Yeah, no, and I, I like that point too, that it, like it comes down to the hand, like who has the gate, what upgrades this cross cav. Yeah, I really, really feel like it just, it, it just depends. Um. It's going to be interesting to see who gets their Death Star operational first. 
And I don't think that's what the game turns on. You know, I don't think it's just a race to get Lux or that 10 hit point gate loaded up. But it's definitely going to change the tempo of the game because if someone gets set up a little bit faster, then the other person is going to react a little bit differently. And I actually think Krusk and Sand Goblins would be perfectly happy with assassination counterplay. Not necessarily going for a big play, but for chipping away at Vlox when he does. Alright, so we have that rider moving up, um, blocking the gate. Let's see. Oh, got the turret. Upgrade. Yep. It's kind of the least p pivotal piece until the gate can move. That's interesting to already commit a turret to the gate before the thruster, because maybe as far as you know, like, thrusters could be your last two cards in the deck and that gate could never be moving. Yeah, you really can't commit to that. You, you can't overcommit to that great gate being mobile. And both decks have backup plans, so that early rider is going to get mobbed. But again, it's buying time. And, you know, without knowing what Stuffy has in mind, they could just be throwing Econ to the winds. Um, they could definitely just decide, I want to burn through my deck like nobody's business and just get to Vlox first. There are a lot of options with the, both these decks, even though I think both of them get a little bit stereotyped into the Super Vlox, Super Gate play. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and Jexic comments probably just to keep the hand flowing. And Absolutely. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I mean, I think it sort of depends on like whether or not you think you're going to get any use out of that gunner on the 10 health gate. And I think you probably would in this met like at the very Oh, if, absolutely. Yeah, if that gate just sits there, probably the cloaks are going to advance at some point. So it's, it probably works to put it on there instead of Krusk. Probably. <laughs> Sand Goblins love a slightly slower game in part because it takes a while for those turrets to actually add up. You're getting maybe one damage per shot with them, so over the course of a longer game, those shots add up a little bit more. Now, granted, turret is not the only tool in Sand Goblin's arsenal, so you, know, you don't always want long games, but definitely I've seen turrets do damage over time in long games that they just don't get a chance to in shorter ones. So we'll see, we'll see how this plays out. And it actually would be nice to commentate a longer game. And by longer game, I really mean a lot of turns more than I mean getting through the decks. You know, again, I would be surprised if we actually reached the bottom of the decks, but both these factions can keep alive and keep from getting hit and cycle units in a way that takes up a lot of turns without a lot of units dying and reaching the end of the decks. Yeah, yeah, and I could I could see it either way. I, I could, like, if it ends up being very close, I could even see a, a game that gets all the way to the end. I, I will just have to see. It really That'll depends. be fun. We can have a little little commentator's bet on that one. <laughs> Yeah, it. I think it depends. I, like my 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 theory on that is like that the the closer the game is, the more likely we are to get like that crazy like at the actual last four units on the board. Because like if one player identifies, oh, I'm behind, they're gonna change something up. They're gonna stop playing for econ, and that's probably gonna force the game to end sooner. So it has to be really tight to really get that to get to that like absolute. This is my last two units versus your last two units. This is true, but speaking to your point, if one person feels behind and goes for a Hail Mary, the game's probably going to end either that turn or the turn after. Exactly, exactly. Oh, I, I would love for the game to really get close enough to come down to the end game you're describing. Yeah, those, those are my favorite games. <laughs> and, yeah. Alright, so speaking to... Um, the fact that super blocks isn't the only option there's that mechanist moving pretty far up rather than you know being tucked away in the back and waiting upgrades so let's i i'm not going to try and predict what massimo has in mind just yet yeah i mean i imagine it's something similar to what we've yep he's gonna okay so he's mm -hmm. going to mm -hmm. copy the gunner and use the mechanist to really mob the rider and block the summoning spot or not yeah. block but protect yeah it seems like at the beginning there we were considering putting the machinist on the forward spot of the five health gate and we decided to bring it over here instead 
um yeah it's interesting it's it's more aggressive than maybe you could imagine with like more of an econ play style for the cloaks but i think that makes sense that massimo has some sort of plan to get in there we don't really know what that is but um, and in a way, that early rider on Krusk's side was kind of a sacrificial play to buy time. You know, I think um, sand goblins do start pretty far back, so it often takes a while if they want to move up, especially if there aren't any thrusters on that gate yet. So sometimes that rider is there just to keep the opponent busy. Especially with a faction like the Cloaks, where you don't really want them to get into their groove either. Uh, Alright, Jet 6 getting sing Smoke Bomb on the Machinist. And it looks like no. I was guessing that too. I, <laughs> but, yeah. I actually wasn't, because a lot of times with Smoke Bomb, you're not actually saving your unit. You're just letting the opponent kill a different one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know that this is the, where I would bother Smoke Bombing. And of course, it could just be that Massimo doesn't have a smoke bomb in hand. Problem solved. Yeah. Decision made. So something small that I noticed quick uh, that interests me is just uh, leaving this wrench rat on Stuffy's turn, leaving that in front of the ten health gate. Normally, I would think like, oh, it's a wrench rat. I should equip it just to like deny the opponent the magic of being able to kill that. Um, but Stuffy not only left it there, but somehow Massimo's turn never involved killing it. So it clearly paid off like I, I suppose that rider just being up there uh stuff you thought no you're gonna have to commit resources to one or the other here um i'm totally fine oh and they're just equipping it right away. <laughs> that's really funny well <laughs> <laughs> well he found something better to summon yeah 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 and scavengers can All milk right, so every we're gonna go for the mechanist kill and that's another reason you sacrifice you can afford to sacrifice that early riders because you're definitely you know you've definitely got opportunities to get that rider back yeah yeah we're still seeing not seeing a lot in the way of upgrades or wrench rat bombs being a factor yet so this is a little bit what i wished for in terms of table setting yeah, both players have to build the hand. Ooh, that is not the role we are looking for. Um, that scavenger no. might have to go three no. on three. Or do you go with the, do you? Ugh. That's tough. I think I would. I think I would do this. I think he. Oof. <laughs> All right, and now the biter has to choose a target. Now the biter yeah. has to choose a target. But I, like, it's just such a big swing if you get to kill both of those units that I do not blame Stuffy for going that. And three on three, I I forget the exact percentage, but you know. But more than half it's the time, it's a coin toss. It's fifty-four, fifty-five yeah. <laughs> percent. And well, you know, yeah. if you go, if you go for a lot of three, three for threes over the course of the game, I want to say you get half of them. But in reality, you never do. In reality, <laughs> you either get godlike dice or no luck at all. And it's a big game swinger. You know, I talked, I mentioned that a little bit last time. Is that these early rolls can really matter a lot more than the late rolls. Yeah, yeah, well, it's, a temp sure. it's definitely to oh daggers coming out immediately. Interesting. Yeah, I, I've I've sometimes seen dagger just like I often think about it as like the finisher, but I've seen a lot of players just like just like do a little bit of dagger here, a little bit there, just get in, get one attack this turn, then three turns later get another attack in with dagger, and almost like use it as a value tool and also an assassination tool later. It's weird. We were speaking to earlier, though, about um, both these factions being able to trade patiently, and yeah. that definitely includes using dagger in less flashy ways. And in this case, the draw kind of gives you no choice, or a very limited choice, if you get dagger immediately, and you're not going to use her, you know, you're not going to keep her in hand the entire game and use her as a closer. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, and this is interesting. Like we're meeting a lot more in the middle. I feel like this happens a lot where like I like expect a really like keep away game and then it's more of just a no, we're gonna meet in the middle. Like we're not gonna run at each other, but we're gonna meet, we're gonna try to do trades and um yeah. I think this is what I spoke to earlier about both factions being able to trade efficiently for a while. 
but that's not how either faction is likely to close the game. Now, if they both decide not to use their flashy assassination tools, then sure, someone's going to win by patient trading. Yeah. But they're really buying time for, you know, for their respective big plays. And sand goblins might not necessarily need a big play if they can... What the... <laughs> you see that? That's insane. That roll... What, what what is that? That's like oh, a, that's... a one on six squared. You still have another. Does he have another attack with the gunner? Not well, going go for cross. Going for cross. I mean, I see that every bit of damage matters. Um, that's insane. The biter's the biter's only going to do one more damage regardless, most likely. Yeah, and I think it was a and two. Let, you know, let him yeah. poke at a bandit. And I think Massimo accounted for the biter surviving anything anyways, because the unit that blocked attack easily could have survived on a three range hit. That's much more likely to just totally whiff. Um, so, I mean, Massimo was comfortable letting the spider survive this turn. I agree. This is definitely not the worst situation for a zero out of three roll. You never want to see that. But this is not one of those tragic ones that the game turns on. Yeah, for sure. I actually think that um, Krusk uh, missing that sa that scavenger missing its three for three kill, or the three for three kill that it was forced to go for is a lot more pivotal than that dagger whiff. For sure, one magic is big <laughs> in such tight games. Yeah, like this. one recovered unit is big, and you know the odds of um, that earlier roll forcing the scavenger to need a three for three was were low and a three for three isn't intrinsically bad odds either so that's by far the worst role in my humble opinion compared to daggers whiff yeah yeah for sure still meet in the middle yeah covering that forward gate yep. that's what i'd think to do immediately it's just anytime i see a forward gate my my summoner wars instincts kick in and i gotta put a unit there um yes uh and hopefully and i think that's yeah. what you know i'm saying that was what makes this game a little bit easier over time too when you're not considering every single possible theoretical option because of the couple a couple of the obvious good ones come to mind immediately and it's not that every single forward gate should be covered, but for what Sand Goblins wants to do, which is, in this matchup, advance, you know, it's definitely a logical thing to do. Yeah, yeah, for but sure. But again, we're, we're, still, we're still patiently trading. Yeah, and, and that's something I can like about Summoner Wars in general, is just like seeing, like, like not needing to have the chess mindset of, okay, these are the exact, like, that I'm gonna want from this point onward or more of just like oh I'm gonna and I, and I shouldn't diss chess I don't play much chess I don't know exactly how it is but 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 but, but more of a like oh I'm just gonna like this will probably be good occupying this gate that'll give me somewhat of a better position I can probably use that I don't know for sure how but that 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 sort of those sort of instincts are easier for me than like a mental crunch of having all the information at my disposal oh absolutely all right, so we've got the mortar upgrade on the gate now. So we have this this Death Star loaded up with no means of transport. <laughs> That's the perfect analogy. Now Crust can hit. Uh, couldn't couldn't right, have done that last time. Built the engines time. last. Would have been nice. Yeah, hopefully. I mean, I wonder. Maybe I'll, I'll search real quick. How many cards stuff he has discarded? Oops, I missed that roll. The scavenger got that roll. Um, yeah. That's the the high odds play that ooh. Alright. So so right so now So Uncle Sparks was discarded for magic and now brought back. Oh interesting. I I I I I am not ahead right now because I just went to check. So Massimo has discarded four cards for magic while Stuffy has only discarded one. Uh which is interesting. Um yeah, and still only one. So only one discard at this late in the game is kind of kind of crazy. Um and yeah, sorry, so we missed that. The the scavenger attacked the unit and uh, retrieved Uncle Sparks. Um, so now Uncle Sparks is in the, in the hand, and we have six magic, so that, that could be very useful. Um, and Massimo knows it's coming. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that is, you know, we've been talking about patiently trading, and I think it's still early enough that I'm not going to declare who's ahead. Um, but look at these numbers on the side of the board. Definitely, you know, eight in discard for Massimo versus three in discard for Stufti, and Stufti has that magic coming and the champ in hand. Um, but they still have 17 left in the draw pile each, so I, I'm not even going to comment on who's going to win on Econ, because I don't think it matters still. I still think this is table setting. No one's yeah. burning their hand desperately, you know, in an aggro at all costs way. But definitely the precise outcome of these trades isn't going to be, in my opinion, the most important factor in the game. Yeah, I agree. And, and it seems like table setting too and just that i think probably Vox does just discard a little bit more than krusk does so like it seems like they're both just sort of setting up doing what they want to do and also Vox is a pretty cheap deck they're both fairly cheap they're in different ways they're they they're both low magic decks comparative to some of the others you know Vox has some pretty cheap commons you know pretty cheap expendable commons and Krusk has all these recursion mechanics as well as those two freeze, you know, those two zero costers. All right, now we see the smoke bomb. So we got, we want that gunner kept alive. Yeah, that's, that's, that's so interesting. And like just seeing the Machinist just getting an attacks there. Like, I feel like I very often don't want to just have a Machinist exposed like that. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, I spent two magic on that. I can't, like, there's, there's no way I can just expose that randomly. Um, uh, but Massimo's getting good good use out of it, oh, a lot more than I do. I wouldn't be horribly surprised if Massimo doesn't want to commit to that super block. You know, the, su the super blocks where he has blocks has to be a bit exposed. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that's an advantage Sand Goblins have in being able to just chip away at mostly protected summoners. They'll get past the mostly part and slip a few bug biters in. So we can ask them afterwards, did you have a game plan going in? Did you have a game plan for this specific matchup or were you playing your hand as it arrived, as the cards arrived? Yeah, no, I'll be very interested to hear that. Um, Cause it feels kind of good on the cloaks perspective. Like, Stuff these put some resources in, they're down, Vox is still at full health. I mean I'm sure I'm sure Stuffy's gonna have a response here, but um By the way, this is what I mean about the game going on for a lot of turns while there's still a lot of deck left. Yeah, yeah. No balls are just charging right in and saying the game's gonna end one way or another in the next three turns. <laughs> fun of commentating all these different matchups. The game plays so differently despite having the same core rule set of three rules, you know, three moves, three attacks, kill the summoner and you win. You know, that's what I really love about all these different factions. Yeah, and just every every matchup just feels like its own game. Like I really feel like I could just play this matchup every day for a month and still feel like I I haven't solved it. Like still feel like there's more to more to unlock, uh, and that's that's just really exciting for me as a player. Oh my goodness! In my head, Canon, I am convinced that Vlox and Cross have maybe different enemies as their primary enemy, and a healthy respect for each other. <laughs> like they don't know yeah. each other all that well, and they don't maybe maybe they don't intersect that much. But I definitely think they respect each other's tech. And they respect each other's strategic command on the battlefield because what neither yeah. faction does is easy. Yeah, that's that's really funny. I wonder. I feel like I wonder if I heard something about like Colby saying that thematically, like some of Krusk's tech has been like salvaged from Cloak's units that they've destroyed or something. I could be making that up. Um, but I definitely oh my remember. goodness. They're salvagers. I can't keep track anymore of whether that's Colby's lore or stuff we came up with ourselves yeah. on the Discord that's oh, kind of become canon. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what's the difference? And yeah, we're seeing, seeing the classic cave goblin setup here of just having summoning spots adjacent to other summoning spots, which will help for uh, the wrench rat equ equips. 
And crust carries. We haven't and seen crust much carries. of that this game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Real Jexic says oh. that in the first edition lore, sand goblins and cloaks were allies. So you just oh, called it. Oh, that's right. You just the alliances. It. No, the alliances. Remember we, there was that, um, what's her name? Merrick that trained up the sand goblins. And sort of civilized them, I guess. Or at least taught them tech without civilizing them. Interesting. You, you know more than I do about this. I never played it. I just followed the lore, really. I yeah. just kind of stalked this game. And to be honest, I think first edition had enough flaws that I didn't quite jump in until second edition. Yeah. But I always loved the lore. I always <laughs> loved following the game and whatever factions were coming out. Yeah. All right, let's 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 actually pay attention to this game because Krusk has set up some pretty conservative gates. So Sand Goblins are going to have a tougher time really mobbing the opponent's side of the board. Yeah, um, it seems very classic. Cloaks are also pretty pretty set up to just be, I'll, I'll stay on my side of the battlefield, you'll stay on yours. Maybe <laughs> there's some crossover when there's a fine, a big final push. Yeah. But we're not going to see any... I, I, don't, I think they've committed enough that we're not going to see, you know, both sides exchanging spots on the battlefield by the end yeah no i'm I'm expecting it to be very very intense especially from here it's just like yeah we can just stay on our sides until we don't until that moment where someone makes a push and then all like every everything's gonna break loose game's gonna change we're both waiting for that moment <laughs> This is maybe good for us to temper some of that impatience and savor yes. this early mid game. Yes. Yeah, and so it's it's interesting just Crust being like, nope, I'm just gonna give you my gates and I'm gonna give you one side of one champion that you can shoot at. And if you're really clever, maybe you can get a few attacks, which it looks like All right. Massimo First is in fact clever. Boots. Oh, and he's gonna put that on the injured mechanist too. And it's going backwards. Of course it's going backwards. Now there's a surprise. <laughs> I was thinking, oh yeah, go forward, get four dice. That's going to be awesome. Nope, the Cloaks player knows what's up. Knows that that Machinist says goodbye. Well, let's see if he can keep that Machinist safe. That's true. Crust can definitely find ways to fly over there. Though, like, if it's more than three spots away from a gate so that no biter can reach it, it's probably safe against Krusk, though. I mean, there's always carry so and whatnot, so that can extend the range. So maybe I shouldn't be well, so certain about that. I wonder if Massimo made his decision based on Stufti's gate placement, knowing that he's not as well set up to pick off that mechanist in the corner. Yeah. Yeah, mix. I mean, I, I look at this and I think, oh yeah, there's no chance that's dying next, next turn. I, I can't think of anything in Sand Goblin deck that would do that. Um, They're making a very pretty little flower arrangement of units and gates. Like that sniper's in the middle waiting to die. Yeah, that's funny. Is it going to get pushed I'm somewhere? just laughing at the ring around the rosy. You don't yeah. see that all that often. Yeah, it's funny. I, I, I feel like that sniper... Oh, no. Oh, uh, Vox copied cover fire, of course. Um, okay. That makes a lot of sense. Just sort of assume that Vox is copying the Machinist with the Moto Boots, if it exists. Well, that's one of the classic plays in Cloaks, and I think one of the things that makes this faction easier to unpack is when you see these little set pieces you know, of, you know, take a shot, cover fire, bring a three life unit in front of you as a blocker. I think maybe when this faction first came out, we underestimated snipers a little bit. Yeah, I feel like there's always a unit that it's like, okay, this is the common that you can discard for this deck or something. Yeah, I think snipers occupied that role in our collective Discord brain until yeah. this pattern kind of emerged of realizing, hey, they're darn good blockers and they're a great unit for blocks to copy. That's interesting. Yeah, I, and I wonder, it's always just like one of the toughest decisions for me is like, 
where do those upgrades for Vlox go? Like, it feels so bad to put an upgrade on something that dies. So I feel like I need to be so careful with where they go. And just, I want to keep those units alive for as long as possible. And I definitely feel like I see more and more people putting like, I mean, hand cannons, of course, going on gunners or snipers, but even like a moto boots on a gunner or sniper, or like just letting it chill the whole game, getting good shots off. Um, it's just, it's hard to pull that off, I feel like, to have the right positioning, but like can be done very very effectively. I think snipers are not a bad at all. I mean, there's two copies of moto boots, so you only, if you happen to have them both out at a time, I think, you know, mechanist tends to be your first choice because Vlox getting two attacks in is so deadly. But, mo but upgrades on a sniper in back are really not bad either. You know, blocks attacking through units, especially with a hand cannon, and especially with mobility, is nothing to be sneezed at. And I think it's yeah. definitely a little bit more situational to try and put the upgrades on a bandit or a gunner. You probably do that if you're just going in for the kill and coming up with some galaxy brain play no one saw, and you don't care whether the unit survives. Yeah. But I've seen those kind of plays too. You know, I've definitely seen Vlox get to where he absolutely shouldn't because someone decided to put the moto boots on a bandit and do something ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You feel like you have any more of an idea on who's ahead in the econ game here? Any inklings? I feel like I have to stick with my claim that sooner or later something is going to break. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but someone's going to have to push. Something's going to change. Um, if we don't see a... Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, I said we're still waiting for a thruster. Exactly. We're waiting for Out of Shadows. <laughs> and, you know, I guess we're waiting for... I mean, we got, we got our moto boots. So we have a little bit of a breakthrough. But I don't know that Massimo is going to go... I, actually, let me rephrase. He's not going to go for a half assassination. <laughs> yeah. You know, he's not going to kind of, you know, expose blocks and not have, be in position to really take out Krusk. Well, that's a good three so for I three. A, yes. Yeah, no, I, I definitely agree. Like, whenever, and, and especially just both these players being who they are, like, I, whenever, whenever the, whenever the ball drops and, uh, they, I think they're just gonna, they're gonna go for it. There's gonna be some sort of, some sort of crazy move here. Um, and, and you yeah. know, each of them will be, per each of them has enough, had enough time to get prepared for the other person's ball dropping. But yeah. I'm guessing they're still waiting to set up pieces than they are playing chicken with each other. I don't get the impression that either of them is really ready to, to let the ball drop. Yeah, and we should. You know, I don't think they're sitting. They're they're not staring at each other with loaded firearms. Yeah, yeah. They're still well. Blocks is pretty far up though. Let's see what's going on what here. Let's see. No. See back easily. No out of shadows. Let's... It has verse. Blocks has versatile. So I'm guessing we're gonna attack once and then move back. Yeah, it looks like we can get yeah. a versatile attack with blocks here. Uh, and one other thing to point out real quick is just Stuffsy is more than halfway through the deck and we still don't have a thruster. Uh, and that's yes. that's not what the Sandgom split player wants. Like, I feel like not it forces you all. to play a different game when you don't have that thruster right away. Alright, well we're not going to one turn kill... So wait, are we getting this? Yep. We're not going to one turn kill Sparks. We're not going to get a lucky Vlox um, five, uh, 5 out of 6. Yeah, and Vlox by the way... has finally made a statement. Okay, that's why he's this far up, or at least one of the reasons, is now he's planting a forward gate. And you, you still maybe even a bit more sound a bit muffled. I wonder if, if it's easy to like move a bit closer to your computer or something, or maybe the microphone yeah. is. Yeah, let me move the oh, microphone that's... a little bit closer to that my face. That sounds a lot better. That sounds a lot better. Okay, that's great. I think the mic just drifted a little bit further. Now, what just happened? Uh -oh. No, I literally uh -oh. missed a turn while I was oh, fiddling with the um, mic. I was looking at the levels, so I don't know if I saw. I, I mean, it, it looks like so dagger. All right, Sparks dagger is down killed. to one health. Yeah, and dagger yes, killed. And, uh, uh, I, I missed. I, I missed the block shot, but I can infer that he. <laughs> that looks like a three out of three. If Sparks yeah. is down to one health. And dagger but got a nice. Not, yeah. Yeah, I don't necessarily care 
sure about the econ, but I do feel like Vlox is better set up than than um, Krusk right now. I feel like he's, you know, Cloaks has more pieces in play at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's worth pointing out that like this this gate is huge. Uh, Vlox having a gate up here, his reach is now much more massive like uh stuffy needs to be a lot more afraid of what's uh what's going to happen the reach of a machinist or plus a moto boost plus an out of shadows to get to cross kill you got to start playing around that gate uh but on the other hand i mean vlox is exposed right now like may we could maybe get a little bit of chip damage on vlox if we have like a detonate and some biters and some um wrench rats and whatnot Plus, that gate finally now has a target for its turret. Yeah. You still you were louder just for a second there. We don't need to keep doing this. You were louder, and now you're a bit quieter again. Um, yeah, okay. I'm just fiddling with the mic. Yeah, how's this sound? Sound. Uh, I sound a bit. Say, say, uh, say it one more time. How does this sound? Uh, it's still a bit quiet. I don't know if. I don't know what's up there. If maybe, like, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can't. I can't really fiddle this thing Ooh, any closer. That, that sounds better. <laughs> yeah, I, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 I'll get up your case, and I, I think it sounds fine. I just thought I'd. Okay. Well, you can uh, twiddle my level and my volume. Yeah, levels. yeah, I, I, I will for sure. Just keep an eye. All right. On. So Stuffy's taking a, a fairly long time to think. They've actually been playing at a pretty good pace for how complex these two factions are. This feels like a fair bit of think time. I wonder if there's a decision point, or if he's just sweating. Yeah, I, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I could see it being either one. Um, just with like now that you have to play around that gate, it's just like, oh boy, like what, what could they possibly have? How do I, like, what do I need to play around? Um, it's, it's just. Well, tough. at the moment, there, you know, daggers well protected. And I guess you could get a bug biter in, but you're you're not gonna kill her with bug biters. So you really your targets are two bandits, Vlox, and that gate. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh Beans asked. And how... you've got a one life you know, one life sparks without a thruster. And cross a little bit out of the action. Yeah, it's gonna. All right, are we gonna try and are we gonna try and trap blocks? It's gonna be tough with Sly to like truly trap blocks, yes. but we could get some damage at least. Um, let's see if it's a detonate or something. And somehow we're gonna need to keep Krusk. I mean, Krusk is probably moving a space back at the very least to just like just try to stay out of range of that gate. Um, yeah. Well, well, we could. I, I, I don't have a good piece of big picture speculation here. Yeah, uh, Be Beans easily asks, uh, how, how's it looking over here? And yeah, it's it's sort of just been both blocks and cross sitting on their side of the board making trades. Um, and only this last turn did Massimo start to make an advance. So we might start to see a turning point for the game here. So we're going to divide it up, so go for little bits of splash damage on blocks. And also ch chip away at that gate over time. Okay, and that biter also protects Krusk. I'm guessing that biter is there more... Well, you could, you could come up with better units if your only goal was to protect Krusk, though. Maybe we got a thruster, finally? <laughs> Uh, th <laughs> thrust crust behind the gate, thrust the gate up. Um, yeah. Oh, maybe that was. I, I would love if that was the decision point stuff Stuffy was wrestling with. Where to put this thruster upgrade that we've been eagerly awaiting? Yeah, hopefully. Oh, nope, just building yeah. building more just biters. Building another biter. Yeah, I mean, this makes sense. So, I mean, this is just classic playing yeah, around. Three out of biters in his, sitting in his hand. Yeah, wow, that that really that's wasn't. not really that, that's not really a hand you're in love with it. I mean, unless you're memeing. 
Yeah, I mean, but it's real hard to discard biters too. They they feel like sort of the focal point of the deck. You you want to get them all out. You want to get value out of them. Um, this will be some nice damage on box, hopefully. Oh yeah, all yep. three. Bean says that so much in Sand Goblins depends on when you draw a thruster. Yeah, I I couldn't agree more. It totally just changes how how you approach everything. Got that exciting turret hit. And those were those are some those are some big hits. I mean, box being down to there is pretty huge. Just detonating right. a single biter, that's fascinating. Just I wonder, to get it back. I like wonder he, if that, oh, his hit. It with a hand of three biters and a detonate would send me into an analysis of Pearl Health's <laughs> aneurysm. I feel like that other card has to also be detonate. I feel like that's the only I mean I could be totally wrong here, but like I still feel like I would just be if it was just one detonate. I feel like I would hold it like to just get value out of it later. I feel, but if you have two detonate, it's like, well, I gotta freaking use one of these. I can't just keep holding it. That's how I would feel. Um, oh, and Bean, um, Bean Freak says interesting not to detonate sparks. That's fascinating, actually. This this feels like the perfect time to detonate sparks. I wonder if. Well, we'll have to ask Stuffy if you remember after the game whether that was <laughs> conscious or. Uh, the pressure of the real-time game, or, yeah, no. Well, he had plenty of time to think about it. I doubt it failed to occur to him. It, yeah, that's fair. It was, it was definitely the sort of thing that could fail to occur to me. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> uh, yeah. Mac is able to get the versatile attack, and yeah, we just we see Stuffy playing around. We're able to get a versatile attack, but what's he going to attack after the biter dies? That that's true. Um, I, I mean, mean, he can move. He, he can move to safety. Yeah, move out of the way. Like move this one bandit up. Move the machinist out of the way, and um, just sort of uh, say, and now I'm occupying your side of the field. Um, yeah, I do feel like. The Massimo wants to use this forward gate to get pressure uh, further further into Krusk's area at some point. Maybe Stuffy thinks he can just recur Sparks later after he dies. Yeah, Although I mean... the fighter could be brought back the same way too, so I'm actually not sure why not just... You're going to detonate one of them. Maybe it doesn't matter. I don't know. I mean, it's still... Uh, Sparks being here does require some amount of commitment on Massimo's part. Yeah, I don't know either, though, because, I mean, you can easily just attack with Vlox and then back up with Moto Boots and have Versatile for another move. So it seems pretty easy to kill Sparks there. Um, I don't know, maybe don't that... maybe that, have to use... Yeah, maybe that yeah. biter will be helpful later on. Um, go ahead. No, I don't know. Yeah, that's that's fascinating here. And and we see like Stuffy, especially with his forward gate, is just gonna have to spend a lot of time playing around out of shadows and just having to play around it, you're playing slightly less efficiently. Like this biter, like that's just a unit that's exposed that Stuffy felt I gotta put this here, otherwise I could be dead out of shadows. Even Krusk over here, something, something's gonna come in, um, could could kill him <laughs> with the right combination of moto boots and out of shadows. Just just with that pressure of that this single forward gate. I'm sure that now that we know his hand, I'm sure those biters were not his preference of blocker, <laughs> of out of shadows blocker. Yeah, yeah. All right, like he said, Vlox takes the shot and moves back. None of this is surprising. And now Cloaks can fade into the shadows a bit. That's 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 real funny. So we, we got this forward gate, we got all the pressure of it, and then Massimo's like, nope, I'm just going to retreat. That, that's, this is fine. Um, and we're still committing to this Guild Machinist, even though Vlox has taken um, five health. Vlox moved up to finish off Sparks. Um, and as you'd expect from the Sand Goblins, he got punished for it, took five damage, quite a bit. Um, and now the game goes on, and we're back to maybe where we started, of just playing this, playing this keep away. Well, now we're playing Ring Around the Rosie Round Gate instead of Sniper, <laughs> but the 
board position, I mean, I'd say the board position looks more favorable to cloaks, but it really hasn't changed as substantially as you would expect. It hasn't changed as substantially as it would after an Out of Shadows play or after that gate acquires a thruster. Yeah. Well, how do you feel like you'd be approaching this board as sand goblins? Like, I'm just, I'm seeing a lot of potential targets. Um, like, I, like, do, would you try to get rid of that gate? Uh, go for the machinist or the bandit? Well, this isn't bad. We're gonna try and scavenge something. Yeah, yeah. That's always good. It's interesting. I think this is still a little bit of playing your hand. If, you know, if a scavenger and a, and, well, and that biter he reserved. Maybe yeah. he had more use, you know, maybe that's why he detonated the biters, because it was going to be of more use right now. You yeah, know, yeah. Uh, he's used a couple scavengers already, but if he's counting on a scavenger to potentially get back, you know, Uncle Sparks or another scavenger, maybe he just wanted that biter in hand because Sparks in hand wasn't, going, wasn't what he was looking for. We got a thruster. We did it. We got a thruster. Everything is changing. Now our forward gate is marching up. Sand goblins can put the pressure back. Uh, they finally found the thruster. We got footing. a thruster. <laughs> oh boy. We have the game, folks. We got a thruster. <laughs> that's that's yeah. Half the deck is gone before we see that thruster, and that's that's just how it can be. And you have to be able to adapt to that as sand goblins and play other ways. Um, I don't think this deck is as one-dimensional as some people claim it is. Yes, people love loading up that gate, but there's a lot of knobs to tweak if the card flow doesn't go your way. And there's a lot of things you can do to control the tempo of the game, to control the spatial positioning of the units. It's really not as simple as wait for the thrusters and pray. Yeah, yeah. Being so with you. Oh, with no. me. Oh. oh, the scavengers are just not doing oh, it. Oh, this is huge. That's brutal. These, I, I haven't been keeping a good count of how many are left, but two scavenger misses is bad. Yeah, here, I'll, I'll say. I feel like this is only two. Summon sand scavenger. So only two? Oh my god, no, it's all four. <laughs> I couldn't be more wrong. That's the, that's oh the last gosh. one. That they're all gone. Well, wow. R.I.P. Uncle Uncle Sparks. Uncle Sparks is not coming back. He's he's just gone. That is huge. Um, and when you're playing sand goblins, you really count on those two out of three rolls. Exactly. Yeah. You, yeah. Can't, you really don't get better odds than that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that is. That is. Dab in the eye. I don't know what to say. Yeah, no, I mean, Stuffy's definitely gonna have to. A after that, and seeing that Uncle Sparks is not coming back, um, Stuffy's probably just gonna have to reevaluate and be like, okay, so <laughs> I'm not doing this Sparks game plan. W what's my out here? How do I win this? And I don't know if that involves focusing more on assassination plan, um, just getting a ton of value out of the super gate with your second detonate. Um, be patient and play counterplay to the Vlox assassination attempt. That's probably going to have to happen sometime, even on eight health. Yeah. So I think the end game of Sparks and Krusk with a thruster each is not happening. Yeah. In fact, I know that's not happening. <laughs> yeah. But there are options other than now. I got to rush down aggro. Now, yeah, I yeah. don't know what I would do, whether I'm looking to counterplay the assassination. It's harder that way, because if Vlox thinks that he can just outlast Sand Goblins, maybe we don't see the big assassination play. And that's what Actually, it... that, the ball is more in Massimo's court. That's what it looks like. like the, the ball is yeah. more in yeah. Massimo's court than Stufty's. And moving back like that, just to those back rows, that just feels like a declaration of, I think I'm ahead. I think I'm winning this long game. Come to me. Like, give, give me your worst. I'm <laughs> I'm positioning as best I can around it. Um, your gate can't mortar me yet. Um you're not getting a bug biter in here. Uh, you've got to waste your resources coming to me because I think I'm ahead. If I'm 
Massimo. I I have to admit I'm thinking that way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the Ma Massimo's Massimo might have pivoted right this moment upon that scavenger fail to cheerfully pivot towards attrition. Yeah. Yeah, and every You don't see that that you don't I mean you know, cloaks are capable of that, but that's why I've been saying it's a plan B and it's a stalling tactic more than it's their bread and butter. Yeah, yeah. But players of this caliber are assessing the game state and making these strategic decisions, you know, at every turn in the game. Yeah, and I... And that scavenger fail was a turning point. Exactly. I, I feel like part of the reason I love this matchup so much is... Just because, like, as I played it, I guess as Sand Goblins more, is I just feel like it, like, forces me to ask difficult questions. And maybe questions that are, like, more obvious to players that have a ton of experience with these factions. But just, like, when I, like, when I have an unfortunate situation like that, it's like, I don't have crust, I don't have silts, I don't know what my end game plan is. Like, it's just really, like, more than, more than some other matchups, I feel like I'm just sitting down and be like, okay, like, what are my outs? Like, how do I do this? And, like, I've had some games, like, okay, my out is, like, recurring Krusk or recurring sparks and like getting a thruster on Krusk and playing for the late game or something because I don't have any more assassination tools or like just finding some weird out like that and playing towards it and like making it work or halfway work um like it's really satisfying oh this is nice yeah so I mean Krusk is still being like no you gotta you gotta go with this 10 health gate uh this 10 health gate is gonna be the problem here it's definitely not the craziest thing for Krusk to win by attrition if cloaks are overcautious, you know, or yeah, if yeah. they can break up cloak synergy. I don't know that I would be in love with this position, but I wouldn't necessarily write it off either. I don't think we've seen a burn hot or a mortar, have we? Yeah, no. Uh, do, you, do you remember if we've seen a burn hot? So I don't think so. I think Silts is still in the deck somewhere. Yeah, I'd agree. And you know, so so Clink and Stilts are still in the deck. There's Rust Rider still in the deck. It's not the craziest thing. It's not preferable, but cloaks do have econ weaknesses if you're not using blocks as you know this this master of the art yeah and i mean so i mean cloaks have maybe a bit of an advantage on board with like dagger and this machinist but hey krusk is like only has only taken two damage has a oh burn holy... hot turn one burn hot turn one. Oh, it just says burn hot turn one. Oh, we missed that yeah so that i mean hopefully that was sure oh well, maybe it was Ugh uh yeah i mean there's a ch i mean hopefully yeah, burn hot turn one odds are that's something random if that's silt that's rough <laughs> uh because that means we don't really have a champion for late game i mean i guess clink i guess clink exists clink needs a few more pieces i think to really yeah. shine yeah i agree and clink isn't gonna kick clink is good i mean don't sleep on clink but <laughs> She needs more. You can't win the game on Krusk and Clink. Yeah. What do you call this setup here? This L? It's like a double donkey stack in both directions. I've no. never <laughs> known. It's it's it's. <laughs> it's a, yeah. It seems like Massimo. So yeah. I mean, we're stacking both our units vertically here is great, and then horizontally, um, playing around, playing around uh, bug biters because right now this gate mortar isn't going to be able to hit. I mean, it'd be great to like equip a biter with a mortar and hit Massimo with it. If there would be some crazy play to like kill this machinist, it'd be great. But I'm just not seeing how you do that. for options yeah it seems like cloaks I are will... go ahead no i will say we haven't seen a gunner in a while we've had a couple of them die yeah yeah and that and that seems to be pretty bread and butter for cloaks as well
Um, it's funny because like even I, I feel like I'm favoring cloaks here, but like I mean, and I, I guess I just said this, but I just like I feel like I still have options as Krusk. I'm I'm still liking this full health gate. I'm liking that I can get mosquito bites here and there. Maybe this feeling will fade the more I feel like if Stuffy just keeps throwing some biters at some units and runs out of juice, it feels like that's maybe that is where this is headed. Uh, the the uh, sand goblins will run out of juice if we don't get a, some sort of assassination. Yeah, I am looking for options for them. You know, like I said, cloaks aren't as unassailable in this position. And definitely, when you know, when you run out of bandits, dagger and Sinsen aren't that useful. You know, when you run out of gunners, the sniper loses some value. You know, not all its values, but really, you know, I think it's pivotal for sand goblins to get some, to get something going on Vlox or that mechanist. You know, even if it's just keeping yeah. him, keeping Massimo busy and making slightly less efficient plays, because right now there's nothing incentivizing Massimo to do anything inefficient. You know, there's nothing incentivizing him to make anything but the most efficient possible trades. And I think you really have to force something. You know, you have to force some sort of tough decision on Massimo. Otherwise, this slow game, I think, is a cloaks game at the moment in this board state. Yeah, yeah. And I'm guessing, yeah, I'm guessing Stuffy knows that too. This is another kind of long, thinky turn. Yeah, and it's hard to give up as the Sand Goblins, especially when you see that ten health gate and you have another detonate. Just to, it's it, it's it's hard to give up that late game plan. Um, but you, you might have That's to. That's true. It's hard to. It's hard to. Like you said, it's hard to walk away from what you might have come into this matchup thinking that you needed to do. Yeah, I I wonder. I, well, wonder... I don't know what he has in hand. We've we've seen these little. Uh, yeah. Um. He, he, I doubt he wants all these wrench rats and bug biters right now. Uh, but what would you what would you want instead? I guess. Like what else? What else is there? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> It's, yeah, it's it's tough. I'm really, I'm thinking about that burn hot that Jaxic pointed out on on turn two or something. Like, what, I wonder what was lost. Because like, maybe, maybe second detonate's gone. Maybe second thruster's gone. Both of those would be, like, terrible <laughs> uh, if, if those, uh, if those aren't here. Um, well, all three of those. I, I don't know that he would have wasted. If second detonate was gone, he wouldn't have used that that's one on a true. bug biter. That's okay. Yeah. So we're probably. Let's assume that he has a detonate somewhere. Okay, but maybe and... second thruster's gone if he's unlucky. Um... Yep, and Uncle Sparks is gone. He can't Uncle recover Sparks it. Is gone. Yeah. Yeah, it makes sense well, for I this. I suppose. I suppose Uncle Sparks had plenty of opportunities to. Well, no. Um, yeah, Uncle Sparks could have tried to recover that thruster. Oh, yeah. No, so that... Yeah, so it's not so the thruster. So he still has second... Let's assume he has second thruster and he has detonate. Yeah, that's really smart. No, that, that makes perfect sense. So we probably still got both of them. Okay, I mean, that, that's, that's helpful. We could that have gives have me confidence. Silt. Could have lost silt. That would suck. <laughs> Silts early, regardless of, you know, despite the fact that the game is perfectly winnable without her, losing Silts turn one is so demoralizing. Yeah, yeah. I can't imagine that it doesn't affect gameplay. Yeah. Though sometimes, if I like, if I draw Silts turn one or two, there's a decent chance I discard her. That, and that might be like a skill issue. This um, is true. But, I don't know. I don't. Uh, every game doesn't need Silts, maybe. Just a mental recovery from yeah. burning silts that seems to be extra difficult. It's 
you know, despite the fact that usually I do discard turn one champs. <laughs> yeah, and it's so funny. Like, we're just looking at this one burn hot and being like, oh, what could you have lost? Like, what's it going to be? Like, what are we behind? And it's just like, like, stuff these burned hot once. Like, playing very cautiously not to lose some of our important things. But even this that one, we were like, oh, no, what's it going to be? Well, it's a different game if you're Sand Goblins and you decide up front to throw Econ to the winds and you're, you know, you're just doing multiple burn hots and mortars. You know, that's a very different game from what we're looking at here. Yeah, and whenever... Whenever this detonate comes down on the Ugh. gate, I'm just looking at that. I mean, we got we got two rats on that, right? All right, let's see if he actually kills that. Oh, that's another not going hopeless our way. roll. That's another roll where he needed he. I mean, it's not the worst thing to leave a bandit alive, but you don't want. It feels bad to miss a three out of four melee. Yeah, yeah, you know, and when you, when you're feeling, you know, you've got to be feeling behind, and a roll like that is just insult on top of injury. Yeah, because he, you know, he needs to chew through these bandits. You know, there's no way around them really, and he probably knows that once the bandits are chewed through, dagger becomes you know, less of a threat. You know, she's obviously still an out of shadows threat, but you know, she this the deck loses synergy with each little piece it loses, and I think that's really how you win against cloaks on econ. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, it's it's funny how much value dagger has gotten out of. I feel like this is a strategy I have not mastered in the slightest of just like dagger pokes out here, dagger pokes out there. Somehow I'm still at full health. <laughs> Uh, after like being summoned up and like one of the earlier turns here, um, still yeah, usually up. dagger is the first target in everyone's crosshairs. But you know, dagger doesn't need a flashy out of shadows play in order to be the MVP of a cloak deck. You know, Dagger yeah. can definitely do this when the draw hands you plenty of bandits and she can slide around. Yeah, and that's, I mean, can sort of just get value. <laughs> Same way Sneaks does, I guess, just being where she needs to be, not being too exposed, saving units that are low health. A lot of utility with the, the sly ability there. So if you're Cloaks, what do you do with Supergate? How do you respond to that gate's slow advance? Uh, you gotta start attacking it at some point, right? Like, you can't just ignore it, can you? I mean... He certainly is right now, maybe but can. it is moving up. <laughs> but, I mean, like, looking at how close the game is to the end, and I mean close, in air quotes, I mean 10 cards in hand and deck total for each player, like, maybe you just be like, you know what, whatever, that can get as close as you want it to, I'm just gonna kill all your units, gonna force you to like detonate it at a high health value if you want it back i don't i don't know if that i feel like you get a lot of value with Supergate, but maybe not i mean clearly that's not what massimo is going here i mean it'd be it'd be nice at some point to like like normally i try to damage Supergate a little bit to just be like to threaten the assassination because realistically oh, think, yeah look at what massimo is doing i think he's hard committing to just not caring that i mean and gate is going once but gate came thruster came way too late for that gate to be able to punish something like that i i yeah that makes a lot of sense yeah and beans beans agrees in the chat too it feels like cloaks can just tiptoe around the board um yeah that's interesting and yeah like i'd, I'd see like a strategy that like i'll normally think of is just like well just get the gate, gate down to like six health because at that point i can threaten the assassination so that the opponent will be afraid enough that they're going to detonate just because they don't want it to be destroyed um but masmo's yeah it seems like going for the other tact here of, nope i got the value game i'm just gonna beat you up from the corner over here that's just insult to injury to the gate like you are so irrelevant That's so funny. It feels really mean, uh, in the best way possible. I, 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 <laughs> I love, I love mean summoner wars where you just be like, nope, <laughs> you can't do anything. I'm moving away. Oh, and then the 
the game's designed for the most part around that not being possible. Yeah. It, it takes... But yeah, those... Yeah. Those deaths are just mean when the opponent dies out of inactivity damage. The one health summoner that can't attack anything. Yeah, uh, that's... I feel like I haven't seen that very often where like a summoner actually dies the inactivity damage often like the threat of it is what like causes them to be forced to expose themselves and die but I i've definitely seen it um like the the avians feel like the the chief of that for me of like when i first realized <laughs> like oh i can just be i can just attack with two units have Ava in my back row, summon those two units to my back row, and like you have nothing to attack next turn. And it's like I love how mean that feels. And that kind of feels how sand goblins oh, play. The second Ooh, there we go. How sand goblins play normally of just like, you cannot attack anything but a 10 health gate. Have fun. Whenever it's down to four health, I will detonate it. Um, and that's there's something really fun about that. Krusk is a little bit exposed, but at this point, since Massimo is so committed to that upper left hand corner. Uh, maybe Kruska is just saying, well, you're, you're welcome to send a unit towards me, um, but... Uh, I think that's the best chance Snufty has of grinding what little econ he can, is just kind of, you know, like, he really has to just not keep missing and maximize these you know, these these attacks, like if Phlox is hiding and not getting three attacks in, although with the sniper, that's... Yeah. Yeah, and you know, I mean... this is a very different game from what we were expecting. This <laughs> this might actually come down to who can trade better. And I will say, Stuffy is hanging in there better than I would have expected. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing at this point, if Stuffy had a chance at the kill, he would absolutely, I mean, I guess he would always go for it, but he would absolutely go for it feeling a little bit behind here. Uh, but Massimo is defending himself self in such a way that, I mean, maybe it's forcing Stuffy's hand to be like, nope, you're playing the attrition game with me. Uh, but Stuffy's hanging on, like, with the thruster on Krusk and that 10 health gate, like, is being able to get attacks here and there um, without uh, getting Krusk demolished or anything like that. And he's, got, he's attacking the units that, you know, can't counterattack all that well. A lone bandit isn't that much of a threat. And yeah. that one health rider, I think, is... Uh, maybe I'm remembering it wrong, but it feels like it's been around for a while. It feels like he's had a one health rider on the board for a while. <laughs> There's been a lot of riders. I feel like that... <laughs> That has become my Sand Goblins comment of this one can go in the bank. This one's gone. I just discard discard them very often. Um, I, feel, I feel like we see. Well, in practice, you know you're getting more. You know you're getting one or more of them back through scavengers, unless you roll like Stuffy. <laughs> yeah, goodness. Do we not scavenge like anything? No, we we scavenge something like it oh, just like once can, this is this is like the 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 c team of scavengers you can see them heading out into the desert with all their gear they're not coming just back maybe coming, <laughs> i don't know maybe they come back with like a tin can and a shoe and you're like really that's what you got yeah yeah i mean that's that's how it goes uh cross cross plays the odds I guess though, yeah, it's just tough. And you gotta you gotta be able to roll with the punches. Like if you, like you you can d definitely rely on three melee dice doing two damage. But you know that uh, like I forget what it is, but it's it's not astronomical for it to only do one. So I mean you you have to be ready for that to miss too. And it's nice to see stuff the force to adapt to that. Um, and how he how he deals with that situation. Rip the scavenger crew, uh, for sure. Sad to sad to see them go. Yeah. Yeah. Hire a new crew. <laughs> Hire them and train them better next time. Yeah, hopefully. You know, I think also in my head canon, um, the the image I have is that after the battle, you know, they all get resurrected. You know, both sides, and they just head out for beers together. <laughs> you know, they they meet up in a bar, and they shoot the shit over the match. You know, yeah. 
you know, maybe maybe trash talk each other over the bad rolls. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah. You know, like, like I said, maybe I'm not um, violent in, in, in enough a person no, for this that's, game. But yeah, I, I, I yeah. picture Krusk and Vlox <laughs> just, they, they, they're buddies afterwards. That, that's, how I, that's how I feel about Summoner Wars in general. I mean, like, because if you ask me, it's like, I, I guess this is a game about war. It's called war, and yet, like, it doesn't, it sort of just feels like a fun little, like, let's, let's shoot the shit and yeah, just go, go, go get beer afterwards or something like. No, I'm definitely not serious enough about the war aspect of this game. Like, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's definitely, you know, uh, you know, a soccer game or something for me. <laughs> it's yeah. Definitely, yeah, for sure. It's definitely a, we're going out for beers after game. Yeah, meanwhile, Cool Doc is, like, out for vengeance, like, infects his whole <laughs> village with this evil virus. <laughs> it's like, oh, that's probably not good, I, you know. Probably... Yeah, Kuldak's Cold, Cold the guy, the, the team that doesn't go out for beer after. Kuldak, <laughs> you kind of, you tell them where they're going, and they're like, yeah, see ya. You know, yeah. They, they, they don't show up. <laughs> This is interesting because at first it seemed like we were going to get some sort of play where like we ended up with units that were slightly further up like after like a gunner like pushes the dagger into place or something and then Massimo decides nope I want to make it so you have to expose units onto this board because I'm just thinking of sand goblins like how do I approach this board like whatever I do I got to attack like I, I just don't want to put a unit on their side because that just lets them sit back like I wonder if there's even a world where we're going to start seeing inactivity damage this game because like i just do not want to throw another melee unit into this meat grinder over here i want to force massimo to expose himself a little bit more but maybe that's just not in the cards we'll have to see and massimo knows not to do that and this speaks yeah. to what we were saying about the ranged game is sand goblins have no unit that they can summon like a that can just sit there and, and trade range shots you know, that's not their game at all. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, a wrench rat hitting for two bows and then hiding under a gate or something, it's a support unit. It's not going to do much good unless there's some chance of, you know, detonating that thing. Or not detonating, but, you know, having the wrench rat bomb go off when the unit it's under dies. All right, so we're going to at least get Supergate a little bit into the action. Yeah, and that was... You know, maybe, you know, it's not bad what he's doing is just trying to pick off these units one by one. Like, one one-turn kill at a time, and Krusk manages to hide. This is interesting, though, because Krusk had to move all three spaces to get there, so there's there's no attack phase thrust here. Krusk is stuck here for the rest of the turn. And that, I mean, I don't know, but maybe he's, exp like, he could be dead. <laughs> maybe. Like... Maybe there's something that would get to him here. Um, maybe it's a little bit more no, of a risk true. to leave Cross exposed there. But I, I see it, I, and I, I think this is so, like what I would want to do as well. Of just like I just cannot, I just can't throw a unit into this board. Like yeah, I, it's, it's just gonna die. I just lose value. I need a way to like force Massimo to come backwards. Oh, he's, he's still fighting. No, yeah. I see that. It's 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 they're both playing this game of come to me. All right, that. All right, Krusk, what are you doing? Turret on Krusk, Biter on the side. Oh, and so it seems like, yeah, it seems like what I was calling there with Krusk is exposed. <laughs> uh, stuff these like, yep, <laughs> I'm covering those other spots. I am not. I am out not of exposing myself to out of shadows. Oh, yeah. No. So painful to use a biter for that purpose. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's see if. Oh, Oof. misses the sniper. He's got nothing. <laughs> Crusk, you're not All right. on your game. Oh, 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 for four. <laughs> oh, for four. Cannot kill that sniper. Oh my goodness, that that feels bad. I mean. It, it, it definitely, it's it's not ridiculous to, to miss that, but boy, does it not feel good. Well, uh, it's not, um... You, you, you get it. On average, ridiculous. you get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On average, you get it. Yeah. On average, with four, uh, you know, the chance of four lightning and they all miss. Um, yeah. That's bad. 
I feel like what I want to do here is maybe maybe this is wrong. I want to move up the sniper. I want to just move the sniper in to just like block off Krusk's movement to just make it hard for him. Yep, and that's what we're seeing. Uh, because now um Krusk can't move next turn, and Massimo might be able to capitalize that um dangerously. It's funny, it's such the Tetris mindset of I want that sniper there. <laughs> yeah. It's such this instinct to block movement or just make the pieces fit. I don't know. Yeah, and it's funny because, like, I don't know why, I don't know what the response is, but it's like, uh, that'll just surely be good to just restrict them in some way. Um. Exactly. It's 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 the instinct to do it, where whether regardless of whether or not it's with the master plan. All right, we're gonna go for Supergate. Um, though it looks like we're not doing it, so I'm wrong. Uh. He considered it at least, uh, but so that, that was a versatile, versatile attack. Um, and what are we doing? A versatile move or something? Uh, yeah. So it seems like Massimo is finally forced to deal with Supergate. Blocks is protected, a lot better protected. Um, than Crust could be, but hey, I'm looking at like a double mortar. Nope, no double mortar, only one card in deck. Hmm, I'm sure Massimo was thinking about that. Because I'm looking at like a double mortar could take out this guild mechanist, but double mortar is not possible with one card in deck and no scavengers. No, da Massimo knows exactly what he can get away with, and he's getting away with it. And look at how much. Did this gate start at 10 health at the start of that turn? What happened? Yes. There? That's 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 just that's well, just that's just brutal. Yeah. Well, four attack, you know, blocks getting two attacks with four bows each. That's you know, eight bows, six damage. Yeah. I would never get it on a six damage on a six health target because of course, but that's completely reasonable odds. Oh, that's rough. And it's interesting, Massimo too, knowing this sniper is going at that gate. I want to do two more damage there. That's more important than attacking Krusk even. Forcing this gate to detonate is is my path to this attrition victory, and I would be very surprised if we don't see the detonate at this point, uh, just because it's so easy to take down that gate once it's dropped to four. Exactly. Yeah, and definitely. I'm so glad we're getting to commentate a longer game here. <laughs> um, it 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 just keeps going. It's a lot of fun. I almost wish there was like some way to get to that other side of that guild machinist. Um, like it'd just be so nice to kill that. It feels so almost within reach. It's just not quite. I just I just can't see a way. Well, in a way, Stuffy committed to a battle that presumably he thought was going to be more in the middle of the board when he placed his next two gates. Or his um the two gates after the starting gate. Well, yeah. Those were pretty far back, and those do limit options for really getting to that mechanist. You know, if you don't have the you know, if you don't have thruster on the super gate and if you don't have units kind of swarming the midfield, you know, or if you don't have cloaks committed to the midfield. Yeah, I'd that's something I like. I'm not sure exactly how that's played. Like, if you ask me, so exactly how has that played out against Stuffy's favor, where the game just didn't develop in the midfield? Um, I, I, I couldn't say exactly. I mean, definitely the thrusters are are a big part of it. Um, yeah, somehow it's just mass well, there, are, there are a lot of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, what would you, what would you say about it? No, I was just saying there are a lot of things working in Stuffy's disfavor this game is the rolls and those buried thrusters. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, is that is that it? Is that all we can say? Is that all we can say? It's just it comes down to a little bit of luck here and there, and now you're behind, not playing the game you want. Um, I, I mean, that, that, that could certainly be true. A lot of luck you can mitigate in this game. Yeah, for and sure. I think both of us tend to argue about that on the Discord <laughs> because, <A little> bit. <laughs> well, you know, because you don't want to give the impression that 
you know, like, you know, to someone who started playing two weeks ago, that, yeah, it all, you know, this is like playing war, you know, that the card game war, you know, it all comes yeah, down to yeah. these dice rolls. You know, yeah. you don't want to give that impression at all, because there is a lot of luck mitigation in this game. Yeah, exactly. Um, but when you have two players of this caliber, and one player gets luck like that, it is really hard to recover from. Yeah, uh... Yeah, the that makes sense. There's there's a lot. It's it's a hard discussion to have. Oh, like, and, yeah, that nice. poor yeah, that poor that thruster upgrade. I don't know if it's landed a or not thruster. The turret upgrade. I don't know if that thing has landed a hit this game. <laughs> uh, it should. And that's what I, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, I think this is just um, you know stuff these dice in general today. But it does speak to what I was saying. Is you do want to see that thing take more shots. All right, that detonate had detonate to come out. Detonate does come and down. Look at that hand. Nine cards. How many cards? Sorry, how many wrench rats were under that? Just real quick. Looks like three. So we got three wrench rats in hand. Fascinating. I mean, that's that's a big that's a big hand. It's definitely it's gonna be close. I still feel like the cloaks have have the favor here. Um, we definitely. Well, it's a lot of upgrades rather than units, though. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the UI just showed us a hand for no reason. I, I think those are all the cards that got detonated. For some reason, it keeps showing that. Like It, it, just, it also shows, like... It just like, flashed us. I, I swear I saw Clink I saw it in too. that flash. Oh, mm, well, well, I'll have to see next time. Gotta, gotta get on Joe's case about that. That's such a terrible thing to be even commentating on is no. like, well, this little bug yeah, in the fix, UI fix revealed game, some Jill. cards to us. Uh, yeah, I, I, don't, I still don't think it's a bug. Or I, I still don't think it actually revealed something more than we already knew. But I mean, Joe, Joe works so hard. No, we, we're really so didn't. grateful to everything, everything he does. Um, I can't, like, I can't Absolutely. believe he's made almost this like entire app by himself. And it's just keep going and keeping doing the different versions Why of it. Why are we um, saying that? thing <laughs> yeah i think i think we saw that too with scavenge it must just have like a bug to do with cards that are technically known to us but like are right. also the game is trying to hide because the game's still going i don't know yeah well it's a lot of wrench rats <laughs> yeah i mean it's, it's every card that was under that gate wrench rats gunner mortar thruster and the 10 health gate all right so i, I hallucinated the clink i thought i saw Maybe, maybe, maybe you saw um, stuff these avatar in your brain, like subconsciously, read that. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> Interesting uh, choice of avatar. Like, what does like it's that kind of you know what what does your choice of avatar say about you? Personality test. <laughs> yeah, uh, definitely. It's it's funny how it's played out in the Discord. I'm not even talking about the game at this point, but like I really identify Massimo with uh, Block just because he's had that as his avatar for so long. I hear you. Um, Jack Six asks, "Are they playing 45 minutes?" Uh, I was told they're not. <laughs> uh, they they broke the rules. They they promised to play quickly, uh, though, and and they 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 know each other. They both know how to get a game done. Um, so, so yeah, so we're not, we're, we're an hour and 24 minutes in, so, but, uh, n not, not on 45 minutes this time, um, though usually that, that is what we do. Uh, so usually it would be, a game's gonna be over in five minutes one way or another, but it seems like it should be over pretty soon either way. What this means is we're not gonna have a 45 minute interview afterwards, like last time. It was funny, I, I was, you know, trying to line up our next series of opponents and, like, Shampoo was watching Vexer's interview and he was like, Do I have to talk that long? Like, <laughs> you want me to interview for 45 minutes? I'm like, no, 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 we're yeah. good. We're, we're not gonna make everyone talk for 45 yeah, minutes. That yeah. would just happen I because that. Yeah, yeah. Neither, neither, well, neither Ben or I could pull the plug on listening to We were what having Vexer so much Robin fun. Yeah, I, I just, I couldn't bring myself to do it. Um, and, and it's great. I mean, I, I think it'll just vary based on how we're feeling. The, the whole event, I'm gonna try to never have go over two hours. Um, 
maybe this one may, maybe we'll go like five minutes over this time but uh but in general just n n never keep keep the event under two hours and we'll just play the conversation by ear how long that goes but no if you, when you when you come on the show don't worry we we, we won't grill you for 45 <laughs> minutes about uh your someone or worse history uh, we're just 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 here to chat about like the a... game have fun. <laughs> <laughs> sorry <laughs> No, I'm just laughing because on paper, a 45 minute interview just sounds like a cross examination. <laughs> it's just like, all right, I need to get better at the game. Profit, Vexer, how? Tell me. <laughs> I need to stop losing. Yeah, this is exactly how I play an end game where I'm down but not out <laughs> you know where both players know that a mistake could still turn the thing around your brain's been burned by an hour and a half of focused concentration yeah you're on the clock and you're under pressure because this is happening on stream and being recorded for posterity you know, Massimo doesn't want to make an embarrassing mistake. And Stufty, if you look at the magic and the hand and the discard pile totals, you know, he's not that far behind. Obviously, he has a lot fewer units on the board. But you're not giving up at this point either. You know, you're not... I mean, some people do, I guess. You're not forfeiting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no yeah. one's gonna forfeit. No one's gonna forfeit on stream. You know, <laughs> yeah. no, most people would definitely wouldn't forfeit in real life either, because the opponent can always make a mistake. Can always make a mistake, you know, and it is so not, often, it, yeah. It is not easy to close out games at all. You know, it is yeah. really difficult to close out a game where you think you have the advantage in board position and units. You know, it's, yeah. it's a skill unto itself to actually finish it and not get 90% of the way there and then die to a silly mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, we, we just, we, we keep seeing that here. Just so they're playing bit. their yeah. best game still, both of them. For sure. You know, neither, neither of them is going to just write off this game. You know, and if they're silently raging about the dice, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, we don't know that. I mean, they could they could be both checking. You know, I I actually wouldn't even be checking the Summer War Zone game analyzer right now. I don't know that the percentage of hits and misses is that far off necessarily. Yeah. It's the fact that Stuffy missed several high percentage important rolls. Yeah. Yeah. And really couldn't catch a break. Yeah. You know, but you don't still... really need the game log analyzer to figure that out. But still still holding on. Like it's not like like you said, it's not over. Um like behind no. but there's 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 a shot and I'm sure he's it's hard to identify exactly what the outs are here, but like I, I'm I'm sure they're there. I feel like well, one thing we're seeing a lot of um with this play is like one player will go in one area and then the other player will be like okay i'm going to the other area so like at first like like uh massimo was over on the left side and stuff is like force force some play over on the right side and now it's the opposite now massimo's on the right side so stuff is like okay i'm gonna put units on the left side where you can't reach and like that's just just like little ways of like eking out a tiny bit of value here and there might give an edge for a comeback for stuff to you and whatnot it's just just very really really wonderful play really great play from both sides here oh absolutely and shifting the playing field around like that is one of the most subtle and hardest to imitate features yeah, yeah, of high yeah. level play yeah. It's just not the thing that you notice necessarily when you're watching games and trying to copy what the good players do. Um, but definitely the ability to shift where the opponent needs to be on the battlefield is a huge component to this econ game we keep talking about. 
you know, just yeah. being able to put units over here and say, now you're going to have to move all your guys. You know, now you're going to have to respond to this. And it's very subtle. It's not as, you know, I mean, on, on the face, it's easy. Like, well, if I put a guy here, then you need to attack him here. Um, but really doing that to your advantage is definitely its own art form. And we're seeing it here. They, like you said, they've just switched quadrants of the board several times. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's a... I mean, maybe you get your wish. You might actually get your crust <laughs> with a thruster and yes. take it one gate with a thruster <laughs> endgame. We are not far from that. Against the world. We're not far from that. Because <laughs> no, uh, cloaks are close. having to chew you know, cloaks are having to chew at gates rather than make a meaningful attack. Yeah, and like and I know that and I and I've known that's something that this game could come down to like the last few units, but like it seems like usually it doesn't, like you said. Like usually someone makes a push, forces a response, catches the opponent off guard, and takes the game. Um uh, but both, but I really like this, just showing off that both factions have the tools to just sit it out and try to play as long as possible, get as much value as possible for as long as possible. I like how Stuffy isn't immediately loading up the super gate again. Yeah. You know, right now we have the, uh, I mean, you know, uh, you know, mortar upgrade is who knows what i mean he know i mean he presumably knows what that last card is we don't um yeah. but it's you know it's it's you know it's it's definitely the chess game right now where massimo knows that what's in stuffy's hands is a pile of unit you know a pile of ranch rats <laughs> um you know, they, he's probably made the same conjecture as we have that, um, you know, the last detonate and one of Clinker Silks is still kicking around. So this is where you start getting not perfect information, but definitely more information. And it's hard to card count in real time. I can't, certainly can't do that while talking. But... You know, Stuffy probably has a general sense of, you know, a lot of bandits having come and gone. Yeah. You know, you know, so it's 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 more known information now, and they're definitely playing at a pace where you can tell they're thinking this through. You know, uh -huh. it's definitely not. You know, some, some. You know, I think some factions, some games, you get a little bit autopilot with the end game. You know, there are just fewer choices and fewer decision points. You know, so you know the the bathroom turns get easier. Yeah. Um, but this one, they're you know they're they're still focused. Yeah, not not can't phone it in here. Every every little bit counts. Um, yeah, and I feel like one player in this end game. It's gonna have to push a little bit, and it looks like that's Stuffy on this turn, maybe even. Like it just feels like, like we can't just keep exchanging blows from a distance. One of these players is behind, and they're gonna have to take some initiative. It looks like that Stuffy. Ooh, that's a really well, nice. Well, nice. Equip. All right, don't whiff. Don't whiff. Wrench rat. <laughs> Do you your thing and this? don't whiff. Nice. All right. That's, oh, that, I'd that's be huge. pissed if that wrench right whipped. Yes. I would be too. And hopefully we still have silts in hand or something. Wait, destroying... Yeah, and that gunner is going down. That's that's really nice. That's really nice. Um, that's exactly what, you know, what you were saying about not phoning it in. You know, set up that wrench rat play. Yeah, Make I, that wrench rat bomb count. And don't whiff that. on the wrench rat roll that was setting it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, no that's, more the, that's the principal skill issue. Don't don't miss those dice. You know, it's such the statistical fallacy that if you've gotten bad dice, then the odds <laughs> have got to even out, and you should get the good dice you deserve. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you... I, I struggle with that one. You know, yeah, I, I, yeah. you know, and the odds do even out in the sense that you know the. The odds are, you know, the dice are unlikely to stay that bad, 
but the good dice that you got coming are not coming. You know, the good dice that you are owed by the universe, <laughs> you, the universe doesn't care. <laughs> there, There is no Summon Wars universe to back you up. <laughs> Yeah, it's I, there, and I feel like there is. God. Yeah, I've heard that said for a while now. It's just like it it takes in in like some of these crazy games just to keep a cool head, um, and just like not go for a greedy kill when you have a better chance of winning econ or just like getting bad dice, but just like continuing to play fear outs. Like just keeping keeping a cool head in a game like this seems hard. What is stuff he's thinking about he's thinking about that thrust right now i guess i don't know i don't know what the decision point was there i guess whether or not to put krusk all the way over there you know i am way past the point of mentally being able to backseat drive them <laughs> yeah that that ship sailed maybe three turns in we it's got to be winding down soon now we got to be approaching the end there's not that much more juice well stuffy has evened it up quite a bit and he's also in a better position to get more attacks in just with now blocks being tucked in a corner there we haven't seen the second out of shadows um yeah. but yeah. this is not an yeah. out of shadows board right now no not in the slightest stuffy's play or so yeah stuffy's played around that just very well the entire time here like every time there was like the, the, like there's just several times here where it's like oh yeah krusk is a little bit exposed to out of shadows right there every time i would call that he would immediately protect it he would immediately drop something in front of krusk behind krusk just to protect it in that in that edge situation which is like that's often something i won't do i'll just be like well if they have out of shadows that could be bad but like i can't really commit that much value to playing around it right here but stuff the stuff he has to very to very good effect just like just just played around it like a little bit here and there when he really needed to um just to make just to not give it value um and that's really one of the things sand goblins does excel at like krusk being able to plunk down units next to him during the build phase you know there's some obvious applications of that like having a unit ready to carry the next turn yeah but out of shadows avoidance is definitely one of the more subtle applications of that yeah of, yeah. of this deck yeah and just playing against well, what, what are you thinking ben look at look at this board look at these hands who are you oh, betting on at this moment oh gosh oh gosh uh here let, let me let me just stall while massimo takes his turns <laughs> Give, uh, okay. i didn't put you on the spot uh, there no, with with uh, both these units coming down i'm feeling after Massimo, it's funny, so like before I saw both these units, it's just like, huh, like Massimo has to commit resources to this board to get in a pure to get an attack, period. Like can't just stay back. Oh, I wonder what that out of shadows is doing. Um, I think it's oh my goodness. I, I think it's still in Massimo's favor, but like barely. Um that's my that's my call. Okay, and second moto boots, that was also a piece that That's on the gunner, I guess. Has to be. Are we, is, is there a kill here? What's going on? This could be huge. Yeah, that's moving up. Can Out of Shadows... How does Out of Shadows get in range? Because that gunner can get adjacent to Krusk. What is going to happen? Oh, this is so exciting. No, not quite. Going back. No, undo, <laughs> undo, undo. Undo, undo, undo. Massimo was thinking about it for so long. I, I, I love that, that we're at this end game here, and Massimo is sitting here for like two, three minutes thinking. Oh. Nope, not going to do that. <laughs> don't worry. I, I don't have those cards in hand. What are you talking about? Never saw this. them. No one ever saw them. <laughs> Out of Shadows killed Crush from there. And it's funny because like, I was like, being like, why is Stuffy thinking about that last move? And Massimo clearly almost has the kill on, on Crusk from four spaces away from the nearest open gate spot, which is just crazy. And, and Stuffy knew it, knew to play around that. And that's just, that just not on a level I'm thinking about. Like, if I see Crusk, if I see this position as Crusk, I'm like, ain't no way <laughs> um, that I'm dying this next turn. Like, it would have to be nuts. Um, and it looked well, like Massimo almost had it. 
<laughs> I mean, I really have trouble visualizing how close I can get without actually playing the cards like that. You know, I, I do kind of have to lay them out and see them and possibly ex reveal them to my opponent. The interesting thing is that Massimo was even thinking about going for a big Out of Shadows play as opposed to going for this attrition game that we thought was in his bag. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's That's fascinating because, I mean... You're looking at, like, maybe that gunner is your last ranged unit, other than the six health blocks against Krusk and Silt. So, I mean, may maybe maybe I called it wrong. Maybe Stuffy has the edge at that point. That's The fact that, like, Stuffy has had such a tough time this game, and we still can't <laughs> determine who's ahead right now, just really, just, I don't know, just speaks to... How good this matchup is, how good this game is, how good these players are. And to be fair, how little we know about the hand. True, as well. Yeah. I mean, we know a lot more now than we did at the beginning <laughs> of the game. That is true. Yeah. All right, see, they're doing it again. Let's shift the battlefield over. I don't like where I am in that corner right now. Yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to make that wrench rat over there and not very useful for you. Oh, that's smart, because that... Well, okay. Nope. Maybe not. <laughs> oh, Massimo is having to think Massimo's about this. Massimo's struggling. Mean, the two, no, the two, yeah. things, the two things we know are that he's rejected the big flashy assassination. Yeah. I don't think he can get another unit there. Yeah. And he's having to sweat the board positioning. You know, I agree with his thinking right here that being boxed in a corner is not so great but being lined up on your back row he's clearly not thrilled about either and since then i think adds more value at this stage in the game than normally um you know six hit points at this point is still quite a bit of life to chew through and stuff he's got plenty of magic yeah, it's for doubtful sure. the bounty even matters. Yeah, I'm guessing bounty. Well, I mean, he's, he's, not at 10 ma he's not at 10 magic. You know, he can't quite summon silts and clink in one turn, assuming he still has them. Yeah, though that'll only uh, that'll only be 9. Clink is 4. No, that's right. So. Clink is 4. But, but I mean, still got to get one more kill for that. I mean, if Stuffy has silts and clink, that's a decent shot. But I mean, those are both melee units. And wow, Massimo is just being like, nope, I'm sitting in my back row. I think I can still get this attrition. Blocks at six yeah. health is exposed right now. Um, but I don't know if Stuffy has a way to punish that. Well, he definitely has something. We we will see. <laughs> he has one of Silts or Clink. He can't have lost both. <laughs> <laughs> he can't have lost both, but it just it doesn't. I just like if Massimo is one space up, could be dead. Ooh, are well, we gonna are we gonna thrust to Silt to be able to get a carry to like kill Sinsen or something? It feels like slightly out of range to kill. He's, he's being decisive. He's probably been sitting on something while Massimo's been thinking. Yeah, let's see it. Thrusting over to Silt. Okay, where can yeah. Silt go? It looks like your only option is to kill Sinsen. Yeah, and I mean so that's carry that's gets still, a lot more yeah. useful. Once you have that thruster. Oh, Go ahead. maybe yeah. he's going for that. I, I'm guessing Sinsen is subsidiary to killing that Machinist. Hmm, interesting. I mean, honestly, no, you probably kill that Machinist. Because, like, who cares if Sinsen dies? Like, you, you're going to have enough. You're probably going to have enough magic for... Um, you're going to have enough magic yeah, for Yeah, Sinsen's Kink. bounty is probably pretty irrelevant. Yeah, and that Machinist... But that Machinist needs to go. Is this... This is... <laughs> that Mac... Yeah. And the riders come... Well, this is... This is Stuffy showing his final hand. Close. One card left. Oh, one card left. I wonder... Yeah. I mean, decent chance that's not Clink if you're playing the rider. Yeah, killing the Machinist, like we predict. This is crazy. Well, like, do, do, do I need to double back? Do we need to... Do, is Krusk looking ahead here? Like, if they don't have a response to it, like if Silts doesn't die this next turn, I'll I'll call the game for Stuffy. That's that's that that's what I'll say here. Oh, that is a it's it all comes back. We get the we get the two oh. on two. 
Gunnar's finally but putting Simpson in some But Simpson did work. not quite die. Didn't quite die. Hopefully Krusk isn't dead. Ooh, actually, Krusk could be a little dead now that I, uh, there's minimum eight dice on Krusk. Honestly, it's probably a little bit hard. No, no, no. I'm totally wrong about that. Because Simpson attacks and then can swap in for Dagger. That's only five dice. Um, so it's probably tough to kill Krusk, but at this point... I could t definitely see Massimo like switching his plan to trap and kill Krusk. Out of Shadows coming down right away. We knew that was in his hand. Yeah, Stuffy made the advance finally. Uh, I I'm guessing, yeah, it's, it's also yeah, possible yes. he, he, he sees the clocks running along and just wanted to take that turn <laughs> quick. <laughs> um. Mercy, uh, <laughs> the mercy rush for us, the Being commentators. Needs to kill Silts. That's what it looks like. Oh, we're gonna, yeah, I'm curious what the Out of Shadows is doing. I mean, like, just like positioning to the other side of Silts. Yeah, but why do you, yeah. I mean, I it mean, might, just... it might like let you, it's really like doing this lie math for blocks is so hard for me because it's like blocks then swap to the zero cost and the dagger swap to the zero cost then you can use out of shadows to change a position so like i feel like there's a lot of possibilities for what units end up where uh so with that sniper we can get up to seven dice on cross but yeah i, th I think i think um Charis is right in chat senna that uh we're going for silts right now And yeah, this is that well, final... Either way, yeah. he's, either way, he's trying to land eight dice on a seven health unit. No matter how, where they end up configured later. You're not getting more than three attacks now that that yeah. mechanism is dead. But backstab. But with backstab, Ooh, backstab. It gets, can be a bit more. Especially if you get the backstab of with course, blocks. Of course, of course, of course. Probably not. I wonder if Vox is just teleporting to the side. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Oh, no, he took back playing oh, no. Out of Shadows. <laughs> right. Oh, and there's there's some luck turning against Massimo. And <laughs> nope, just kidding. <laughs> just <down>. kidding! <laughs> That's gotta be some kind of commentator's curse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's I'm, I'm happy to be wrong. It's real funny. Uh, blocks... Vox is looking at some dice here. There's definitely a potential lethal, though it's not incredibly likely. Um, yeah, and I don't think there's any, I mean, maybe, if the, yeah, I don't think there's any other card that would be. Because so the Biter does one damage, and then Cross can do three, and then the Gunner can Cross do can two. Cross can carry a wrench and a The wrench equips. Biter. I like what, yeah, the wrench, Cross carries the wrench, the wrench attacks. Uh, so what, that's... He's even got one more... And right, this... so he's got the wrench and the Krusk dice, and that rider's a little bit... Oh, and so... after that, you get the gate gunner dice as well, because Krusk can thrust out of the way, and the gate can thrust up. And that's it, and oh. I definitely I definitely think you go for this. With Silt's coming down, turn that like on the turn she summoned... Uh, stuff these behind the econ game and yeah. has to get the kill if there's a chance. It's it's all coming down to this roll. This roll is the game. I uh, just gonna equip you know, equip blocks <laughs> for the BM. Um, we don't need anything else. All right, we got four oh. turret dice on blocks. Can they pick it up for stuff? The and there it is. Oh, <laughs> there Picking it, it up. is. Single handedly, Krusk <laughs> whips out his pistol and shoots him down. What a game! That what a game! <laughs> that is that is just crazy. Oh my goodness! What like in, uh, the econ slide? That was an in the incredible game. Sense of the word, yeah. GG. <laughs> that's 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 just so much fun. Uh, love the turret oh, win. Love the turret win. Um, wow. Just need to like recover from that. That's 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 really quite beautiful. Um, F Fuzzy, how are you on time here? If we went, uh, do do you have a hard cutoff? If we went ten minutes over, oh, uh, ten minutes over should be fine. Ten minutes is over. Okay, so we'll hopefully still get a conversation in here. I think I'm gonna just go ahead and start that up right away since we're already behind. <laughs> salt, yeah. salt, salt, salt.
uh yeah what a, what a game uh thanks thanks for tuning in everyone all right so we're, we're gonna get a quick discussion with stuffy and massimo hopefully they're able to make it and uh, set that up hello how's it going hello can you hear me yes i can can you hear me? What, what a game. Yep, I can hear you too. Um, let me change uh, levels. That, that. Hi. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Uh, how, I'll, I'll ask you guys, well, I'll, I'll just start by asking you guys to introduce yourselves. Uh, so let, let's let's start with uh, you st uh, stuff. Sorry, we'll get to the game in just a second, I promise. But I want people to know who they're talking to. Uh, so so this is Stuffy. Stuffy, tell us uh, how you got interested in the game um, and something that you love about it. Something that's your favorite about Summoner Wars. Okay, I got into the game uh, uh, because of Massimo, actually, or Max. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think I wrote about it already. Um, yeah, we. I was uh, at my sister's place, so they were in Cologne together, and uh, I was visiting. So we had some game nights with Massimo, and there he first introduced us to Summoners War First Edition, and yeah, we kind of got addicted pretty fast so we <laughs> i also went to some some uh tournaments little really little, little tournaments like four to six people I, I don't i don't really remember i think six it was um yeah it was fun but we didn't have many players here so yeah. when i was finished with my internship uh where i stayed at my sister's here yeah. It was kind of hard to find someone to to who enjoyed this game the same way. So yeah, in the end it was put away for a long time until the second edition online came. So yeah, and since since then uh, the second edition really really had some some benefits to it. Yeah, and it's. Fun. So it's a uh, it's a good mix of luck and yeah, knowing the game and uh, calculating the risks. Yeah, that sounds that sounds great. Uh, that all that, that all makes a lot of sense. Sounds like fun. And and let's let's turn to yeah, you sure. too. Go ahead. No, I'm going to interrupt to ask, before I forget, to yeah. ask you to say hi to your sister for me. Um, Lena Lieb is also <laughs> a very good player in this game. I practiced um, with her during the last league season or so, and it's just, it, it's been interesting hearing the backstory of the three of you. Like, you're not strangers. <laughs> and she mentioned yeah, that definitely. you were over at her house right now, and that you, she and the kids would probably be asleep. So thanks to both of you for staying up late for this game and this interview. I'm definitely appreciative. Yeah, sure. I don't know if she's listening, but she definitely watched the game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. That's dedication when you have that many kids in the house and you stay up late for this. But this is what we get for trying to schedule across time zones. Yes, that, thank thank you guys again for staying up late. Um, and yeah, let's so let's let's turn to you, Massimo. Uh, what what first got you into the game, um, and and what do you love about it? Um, I think I um I bought the master set around two thousand twelve, the master set of first edition. Um, I'm not sure I stumbled across Sumner Wars um, on Board Game Geek. And um, yeah, more or less got instantly hooked. Uh, like I scrolled all the content, all the factions got me interested. And um, yeah, then um, so shortly after I got the master set here in, in Germany in the local board game store and um, tried to introduce it to some friends. And uh, some one of uh, these friends was was Lena, who was also living in Cologne 
at this time and um at first i wasn't sh i wasn't really sure if she would be interested in in this kind of game which is more confrontational like a war game but um yeah she really got into it and uh, we uh, played a lot of face to face games another friend um i got interested as well but he never really got that deep into the game like like me so um yeah it's always a difference of course um how how much time a player wants to invest in it, in this kind of game and um yeah this makes uh of course a difference in the in this difference in the skill level but yes mm, after o over the next two or three years i bought like um the additional decks the starter set and i even um by yeah i even met colby at the fair in Essen and he signed my uh, <laughs> alliances um, alliances um, copy of some of those alliances at, uh, from first edition yeah I was um, I was there in ashes uh, for some of was on the on the fair in Essen and um, so I got to know Colby and or I, at least I I short I quick I briefly talked to them and Colby and Isaac, who was um, the f yeah the designer of uh, the first edition of Ashes, another game of Bladehead Games. Yeah. Yeah, and um, like when there were like uh, uh, rumors or like the development of second edition, I tried to uh, I applied for playtesting as well, but. Um, yeah, I, I took a look and they had like a very um, basic interface where you have to, to do everything on your own, like Vazal, um, but even like a bit more basic. And so I, yeah, I didn't get that interested and uh, yeah, waited, waited for the demo um, and... At this time, I was playing Summoner Wars online. I got the master set uh, as a present on Christmas. And so far, I played like five games offline or four games. And three of them were with my nephew, who was only seven. So they were quite different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's wonderful. And we're, we're also grateful that you got into it uh, for all the work you do organizing the league. Um, I can say that a Absolutely. billion times. I'll just say it once, though. Yeah, it's, everything you do is, is so appreciated by the community. Yeah, great. Thanks. Yeah. Um, and so we, we want to wrap it up quick here, uh, but we'll still we'll maybe for 10 more, 10 more minutes just chat about the game. Um, and I don't even I don't even know what to ask. That was just crazy to watch. Um, I'm curious, maybe if you just have thoughts in general, but maybe like how were you approaching this matchup? What were your thoughts going into it, and then how did that change as the game actually played out and through the finish? Well, um, um, yeah, you can start. <laughs> so actually, I wanted to to uh, to, to play the game uh, aggressive and. It's long as he still has one gauge try to somehow get a get a bet uh next to the end behind his units but actually i got no bets it was just scavengers and, and link so <laughs> got an annoying i couldn't do much and uh as the first scavenger missed i was like yeah okay mm, let's see and then um, the second one on the, on the left side, he, when I tried to kill the, the sniper, I thought it was lost actually because it was the last one, and uh, yeah, I didn't see see much hope of after that. But somehow it worked out. <laughs> yeah, to, to tell me more about that somehow. Like, was there a point in the game where you're like, okay, this is my out now. This is how I have to play differently. That you ended up sneaking this victory by. Yeah, um, the aggressive part stopped when I moved backwards behind my wall and yeah, tried to 
get some uh, good opportunity. So when I thought I have lost, I was like, oh, okay, I don't know. I have to, to do some crazy move probably to, to have a little chance. And I focused on the big one. So keep keep it and put all inside what I have and uh, use detonate to get as much back as I could because I was definitely... Um, yeah, not in, uh, not able to to catch up with uh, the cards he had left. So yeah, actually I was kind of scared he put some crazy move out and destroys it with one. But this doesn't happen. So with all the cards left, yeah, I I saw some kind of hope again. Yeah. But yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I have no more to add for now. Yeah. Yeah. And what about you, Massimo? Uh, how is, how, how, yeah. How, how did you approach that game? How did it play out? Um, yeah, it's always uh, quite a, quite difficult for me. It, I didn't really have a match plan. Um, I listened. I um, I was um, was l looking for the the link to the Twitch to send it to a friend of mine, and so I listened to your talk uh, to you both chatting about the match, <laughs> and, and I thought like, oh, yeah, they might be right uh, that uh, I have to push as well because it's quite uh, <laughs> quite difficult to out uh, out value. Um, um the the sand goblins especially if they can like set up all these uh the super gate and uh, have like a champion uh, or sparks or quest with um with the thrust upgrade and so i was trying to um be, uh, play a little bit more forward than usual um there weren't a lot of good uh out of shadows opportunities for me. Mm -hmm. So I tried to trade units as good as possible. Um, in the end, I thought I, I, I found a, a hole in his defense um, when I was preparing my uh, out of shadows turn with the gunner and the motor boosts. But uh, yeah, I was uh, one uh, space short, so I had to, <laughs> had to revert it. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I, I thought that's true, actually. <laughs> yeah, okay. Yeah, and then I, yeah, I was a bit exhausted as well, and um, no sales was coming, and I didn't got didn't do a good job protecting my mech, mech mechanist. Uh, in the end, I could have solved that better. Um. But yeah, that's boss. Uh, yeah, but we were running, running uh, late, and uh, yeah, it was quite difficult to uh, to maneuver around sills and, and the carryability. So that was uh, not that that easy. I and yeah, it was. It would have been pretty pretty difficult to finish this game in time. I. Um, <laughs> I I opened a three-day game on accident because that's what I used to do. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I ever played a 45-minute game so far. So, um, yeah, I uh, just... Whatever, run out of time, yeah. Definitely. Yeah, we would have both run out of time, yes. <laughs> no. So, so that was fortunate. So I, I was looking uh, constantly to, to uh, move away from his uh, boots uh, region so that he couldn't reach me. That was the constant goal. So when he moved to the right side or to the left side, I uh, tried to attack on the other side. So he couldn't really use Flux so much. And actually, I, I thought about um, joining the Twitch <laughs> also, but uh, yeah, thought it's better to to keep focused and not listening to you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Mistake number one: listening to the commentators at the top. Oh of no, the no! Game. I just just listened to the first uh, four minutes. I didn't. Uh, I'm joking. Had it on. I think, yeah. 
I think Ben and I said so many speculative things that in hindsight, one or more of them would have been right, and we could claim that as the prediction. <laughs> like, when you predict absolutely everything, then something comes out sounding like we were psychic. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, I make sure to watch the stream tomorrow. The video. Quite interested. Uh, yeah. Oh my goodness, it was so much to speculate about. You know, there are so many options for us to consider what you might be doing, what you might have in hand, what Stuffy's doing, what Stuffy's thinking, what Stuffy thinks you're thinking. <laughs> <laughs> you know? it, was, it, was a, it was a treat to watch. You know, even if Ben and I were just, you know, chatting among ourselves without a Twitch stream, it was definitely, there was, there was some great moments in this game. You know, we are talking about you know, stuff to just, you, both of you just shifting the game all around the board um, to wherever you thought you might get an advantage. And that's, you know, it's something Ben and I both admire. You know, it's something Ben and I both, I think, aspire to watch some of the things, you know, to, in our own gameplay, some of the things we've got to watch in your game. Yeah, uh, so uh, there's, there's so much going on here. There's so much going on in this matchup. Um, so maybe we just finish off by asking about that. Like, I mean, ev even though you guys went over the time limit here, like just to be able to play such a complicated matchup, even in this amount of time and take turns that feel very efficient and very thought through, um, like if it, it, uh, it feels like you guys are both, I don't know, very, very good at dealing with these very complicated situations and stuff that you like playing around out of shadows and some critical moments. And I mean, just both of you with general positioning, I'm wondering, like, do, do you guys have any advice uh, to players about how to, how to pick up really complicated factions and play against really complicated factions um, and just learn them in a way that eventually Eventually, they start to feel kind of intuitive, and you can take the plays relatively quickly, even though it feels like there's so much going on there. There's lots of practice, I, I think. Um, you have to make lots of faults, and <laughs> yeah. with more and more time, you, you stop doing that. So what I am um, always... What I have to consider always when, when the game counts for something or if you really want to win, to not do some some risky moves to do something cool and then uh, it doesn't it doesn't work out and you standing there totally open. It's most of the time those those things do make you lose really quick. Yeah, yeah, I see. But practice. <laughs> <laughs> Well, also, don't giving not giving in to those first impulse moves. I mean, definitely, just you know, yeah. It's it, one of it's the things I'm important. still learning. <laughs> like, you I mean, just want to charge up and kill something, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Matt's um, yeah. I'm ahead. not sure. I think it's for me. It's it's, it's a question of experience. Um, Especially in a matchup like this, you really have to know the cards and the um, possibilities of of your opponent. And um, yeah, I was definitely, especially in the end, out of my comfort zone, um, and tried to yeah when I tried to do my uh, turns a bit more quicker than usual. I I can't really give a good uh, tip what how to how to manage these uh compl more complicated factions i think if i rewatch my my game i will find a couple of mistakes or misplays so um yeah more or less ex it's experience and you learn from your faults and uh yeah it, i uh i really um can second um, your your tip don't go for the for the first idea um, 
to try to evaluate different ideas and um yeah i try to uh, play more um conservative and don't be don't take too many many risks and try to yeah to, to keep a good formation and not give your opponent too too many opportunities to retaliate so you were both masters my, at that that's more or less my play style yeah Yeah, it was just very, very yeah. impressive to watch you both deal with those, those situations and play, play those Cla more. Go ahead. Classic Massimo playstyle to, to put in, <laughs> in, 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 the, in, in the back, in the back line of his side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but and watch what, what will happen. I was but so glad that my, my... my mechanism at last. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I I was really happy that my my three rats uh, really did it. Like uh, the first one jumping through the bandage <laughs> and exploding. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was the, I... <laughs> the, the most fun moment for me. <laughs> I personally would have been so mad if that rat missed that shot. <laughs> <laughs> I I at that that point, you know, the dice had been unkind enough to you that I was rooting for that wrench rat like you guys would not believe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was emotionally invested. Yeah, well, Fuzzy, you have any last questions here before we wrap it up? Just thanks again to all three of you. Um, these are fantastic to do, and I really just love getting the chance to talk with people in the community. We, you know... Mess, you know, we've written so many Discord posts over the seasons that it's great to just, you know, put a voice to to these posts and this gameplay, even though Massimo is still blocks in my head and probably will be forever. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you as well. You know, say, say one more time. I think it's great what you do, so it uh, yeah, makes the community, community like uh, a little more yeah it's 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 so great to just hear from you guys and to hear your stories uh I, yeah it makes me really happy i'm so glad you guys came on um and i see just real quick before we go i see one question in chat uh what massimo do you know what your last five cards were um <laughs> I'm, I'm curious my last five yeah, the last five in your um, hand. If you don't have it up, it's Sniper, fine. Sniper, Smoke Bomb, Out of Shadows, Moto, Boots, Gunner. <laughs> gotcha. So quite a nice hand, yeah. Yes. Yeah, that would that, that'd probably take out Krusk if he missed or something. Oh, absolutely. Um, but... You could have uh, moved blocks behind the wall, no? Yeah. Switch it with the uh, with the what's the name? Vincent. Yeah, slide out into the back. Yeah, it would have been tough if you missed. Oh, um, I, oh I could have done it. Yes. Oh. Uh, yeah, you could have done it, and I was like, ah, oh, no, he will move away. <laughs> that sucks. Oh. <laughs> oh, and really? I was really, oh, really yeah. annoyed when you when you hit three three on. Says with, with rocks in the end, like <laughs> so, so, such bad hits, and I was like, Yeah, she still has three uh, uh, health points. He was so one for and, that and, call. No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes, um, yeah, I, I, I just see I, I really made a big mistake in the end. I could have just, uh, yeah, switched flocks behind the gate, yeah, that would yeah. have, yeah, it was was getting late and i was yeah a bit well, exhausted you know i mean that's a good that's a good note to end on it's encouraging for everyone to see i mean it, it's mistakes happen and you're always <laughs> you're always making them always learning from them um but yeah uh thank you guys so much for coming on thanks for staying up late um it was so so nice to hear from you get to know you a bit absolutely thank you yeah, thank you too it was pretty fun it was fun yeah, great. Well, I hope to see you guys around. Um...
Yeah, and I think uh, next week, uh, hopefully be back. I'll announce that later this week. Uh, hopefully I'll get another scuffle in next week and just keep going with these. And uh, feel free to message uh, me or Fuzzy if you're interested in coming on, uh, if you're interested in competing. Uh, we just love to have as many different different people as possible. Um, uh, no matter how how good or bad you feel on the, you are at the game, uh, we just love to have you on and chat and play a game. Um, but yeah, that's that's all I have. Okay, great. Well, I'll I'll all go right. ahead. Sorry, see. Go ahead. No, uh, I want to say all right. Uh, thank you, and probably have a nice day. <laughs> yes. Yeah, have a good have a good night. Good, good night. night. Yeah. Spend time yeah. over here. Yeah. All right. Okay, great. Good night. Good afternoon. All right. Thanks so much for coming on. I will catch you guys later. Bye bye. Bye bye.